The value of workouts is not the calorie burn. If that's what you think the value is, you're doing it wrong. It's all about the adaptation. Stop trying to burn calories and focus on what you can get your body to do through adaptation. That's the only way for success. Mm. This is a... <laughs> both of you guys... Mm. Yeah. <laughs> so Speechless. common. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, we had a caller who asked us about whether or not um, he should add back in the calories that his... Uh, I think it was my fitness pal was showing him um, that he was burning with his workouts. And mm -hmm. Adam, you know, very quickly was like, no, the margin of error for that is, is big anyway. Then on top of it, right. it you, you try to calculate how many calories you're burning um, and replacing is terrible. That's not a good strategy. And that just made me think about how people value workouts for so long. We look at workouts as a, a way to burn calories, but it's such a terrible approach because the body first off adapts very quickly to the calories being burned. And even if it didn't, if you were able to maintain that, it changes other behaviors to offset it. And it ignores the most important aspect of exercise, which is what does this get your body to do with adaptation? And then what does that mean? This is why people have devalued strength training for so long is because people looked at it and said, oh, on an hour per hour basis, it doesn't burn a lot of calories. Totally missing out on one of the most effective forms of exercise for fat loss, body sculpting, and longevity. Still a little empathetic uh, towards people that think that way, though, because think about all the industries that popped up, you know, banking off of that yeah. information, like your uh, circuit training and all of these, um, <clears throat> you know, franchises that that really promote that. Like, this is how much we have to burn, and you got to sweat, and you got to... Uh, and it's just a constant, uh, elusive uh, target that you're always trying to to manage, and, and it's really, um, really not controllable uh, in, in terms of like it's not a good long term strategy, obviously at all. Do you think that it's the same strategy as like the pre workout market, where it's like the reason why that's such an effective way of marketing is the sweat and the burn is because the feel yeah, you feel it just like how pre-workout throws all kinds of shit in there the most effective thing is obviously the caffeine in there but it's like let's throw all this other stuff that makes your skin tingle your face burn and like you know, <laughs> totally and yeah. sweat you know, right and that's so it's like in. so do you think that's why that's been perpetuated is that like when people push really hard sweat really hard they attribute that yeah. to like that's getting, work so obviously it's going to uh be beneficial i think that's part of it the other part of it is we're, we're now for decades we we understand that you know if you need if you want to lose weight you have to burn calorie more deficit. calories yeah, yeah you have to create a calorie deficit and so what that does is it, it 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 insinuates that the value of activity is the calorie burn right so it's like well if i'm going to do two workouts a week or three workouts an average person right i'm gonna do three workouts a week and here are my choices i could cycle i could swim i could go on elliptical i could lift weights i could do yoga I could do Pilates. What does the average person do? Well, what's the calorie burn on each of those for an hour? That's yeah. the one I'm going to pick yeah, yeah. because that's the most value, which is the, that's actually the least valuable thing uh, of a workout is how many calories you burn. Now, activity itself is healthy. Moving is healthy. And there's mm -hmm. lots of reasons why it's good for you that have nothing to do with the calorie burn. But the most important thing is adaptation because that's what sticks around. So some forms of exercise, the way you adapt is you become more flexible. Other forms of exercise will improve your stamina and endurance. And other ones will build strength and muscle. Now what you want to do is look at the downstream effects. All right, what happens if I build muscle? Oh, wow, I burn more calories on my own. Mm -hmm. I have a faster metabolism. I'm more insulin sensitive. I have a uh, greater storage capacity for sugar and carbohydrates. I have more mobility. Um, well, it looks like when you look at the actual adaptations, well, if I'm only going to work out three days a week, and I want to be lean, fit, and healthy. Strength training crushes all of them. But because we were so focused well, on look calorie at burn. What, yeah, we'll look at the calorie burn from a strength training workout. You burn barely any calories lifting <laughs> weights properly. So people aren't going to value it with that kind of type That's of right. mentality. An hour of running is going to burn three times as many calories as an hour of proper strength. Not circuit training or weird stuff, but actual proper strength training. But when you look at it over a five-month period, like which one's going to make you leaner, sculpt your body? balance your hormones out more effectively in a time for time basis. It's going to be, it's going to be strength training. Right? I'm glad you brought that caller up because, um, I wanted to, to extend that conversation, especially considering that a lot of the audience probably won't listen to the, uh, I know we have a, a split audience that listens to the live callers and then some people that just listen to the front half, but I think it's a good conversation that I don't recall we've had in, in depth of like, what should you track? What should you not track right. when it comes to these apps and tools? And so I thought that was a really good question that he asked. And of course, I had a very quick answer, but I think it's important that I we explain a little more uh, the logic behind that, um, or at least the my thinking behind 
uh, why I don't want somebody to try and you know, add it because all these great apps are, they're becoming more sophisticated, right? Like you, some of them you can wear in the water now that track your swimming, you know, calories burned. And, you know, if not that, then they have estimations. If you were rowing, it's for a half hour at high intensity, it's this. If you were biking, it's this. If it's mountain climbing, it's this. Like, and so they have all these algorithms to guesstimate how many calories you burn. And to your point, yes, of course, like, first of all, you're valuing the, the least valuable thing about the workout is the calorie burn. But I also, the reason why I say don't do it is just because those there's already lots of room for error. And so I really want my client, if they're going to use these tools, like, and, and, and I would loop in body fat percentage and scale and all these things. It's like, we want to use these as like, um, as, as, a, as a guideline, but not a truth, right? Like, it's not the, like your scale. Even the, even the most accurate thing that they have, which is telling you how many calories and macros a food has, even packaged food, even that there's an error, a margin for error that's allowed. Right. That could be as much as 10%. And and so the more things that you add into this formula <laughs> yeah. of how much did I eat and it's burn- It's just a data point. Yeah. The, the greater the, uh, the possibility of uh, error is there. And so I'm going, okay, I only want, what I want is steps- and and the calories that you're eating, right? Or the macros that you're eating, which it, it calculates out to the, the calories. That's it. Because those are the two big rocks, I feel like. I feel like if I yep. know what your, your macro breakdown and total calories are, I have a, a, a relatively good idea of your steps, which gives me a good insight into your activity. I don't care what it was. I don't care if... 10,000 of your steps was, was, uh, you know, half running, half walking throughout your day or all the above. It's like, it gives me an idea of what your, your day to day and your weeks look like, which then from a coach perspective, I know how to adjust the macros. If you're varying your different activities and then trying to use an app to guesstimate what your metabolism is burning in those activities based off of what you think is intense or not intense or the duration is like, man, you're really adding way more to this, this equation that I need. Yeah. And, too and, complex, and yeah. what you want to look at is, am I losing body fat? Am I losing muscle? Am I gaining muscle? Am I stronger? How do I feel? Because in data will show this as well. Like if you had a week of poor sleep, okay, everything else is the same activity, stay the same calorie deficit, stay the same food, stay the same, <clears throat> but you just had poor sleep. You will now lose the weight that you lose 50% more of it will come from muscle them from body fat, just from poor sleep. We have studies that, that show this. So your metabolism and the way your body reacts to deficits and calories or surpluses is greatly influenced by so many different factors that just, just looking at, oh, I burned 500 calories, therefore I got to replace it with food. Like, no, no, no. How do you feel? Are you stronger? Are you losing weight? Are you gaining weight? And then let's adjust as we move along because things change as you move along. And your body adapts, by the way, even if it's everything stayed the same, even if your life was identical your body adapts to the activity that you do so that it's not the same. It doesn't react the same. So I got to add weight or change the workout. Otherwise things stop or halt in terms of progress. Yeah. So it's very important that you, you really pay attention to how you're reacting, how you feel and don't get so caught up in, in these. I mean, I, you know, cardio machines, this is how they would sell cardio machines to gyms back in the day. You don't see this as much anymore today, thankfully, but right. Yeah, I that know. was a competitive uh, talking point at that, you know. Yeah, which piece day. of equipment burnt the most which calories? One, yeah, it was the most calorie yeah. Oh, this new piece of cardio. Did you see how many, how many <laughs> calories it burns per hour? You know, that's the one I'm going to use. Like, uh, uh, I don't know. It doesn't really work. Uh, it doesn't really work that way. Today's program giveaway is MAPS Anabolic Advanced. In order to potentially win, here's what you can do. Leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. Also, this month's sale, Maps Anywhere and Maps Hit, 50% off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Anyway, I'm excited to uh, to to go to Vegas with you guys yeah. to do a no, live event. Another live event. It. Yes. yes. I'm, uh, I'm a uh, perfect place for it. <clears throat> I'm, pr yeah. I'm proud of us this year, right? That was the goal is to, to start getting back to getting, I mean, now Meeting that, people. Yeah, now that- uh, all the, you know, COVID dust is finally settled and, and, you know, everybody's back to traveling and doing their thing. I'm, I'm excited to get back. I mean, we just got back from, uh, Orlando. And I tell you, man, every time I do those trips, it's so, uh, rejuvenating, you know, like I just, it it is. and I'm, I'm, and I'm a bit on a high for a couple of days. It takes me a bit to kind of wind and come all the way down. And, and it reminds me of, you know, why we do this stuff. And what's really cool is like early on, 
I felt like a, a lot of uh, the live events, we got, um, you know, you're n- just normal people that were coming that were listeners, <coughs> where I feel the shift of like mostly coaches and trainers now. I feel like mm-hmm. we're seeing more and more coaches and trainers. It'll be interesting when we do this live event in Vegas, uh, which I think is a great to your point, Justin, meeting point. Like, I think that's an easy... Mm-hmm. Who doesn't want to go there? Yeah. I mean, easy airport to get in and out of. Easy excuse of, hey, why don't I go stop by and see those guys? Because I wanted to go to Vegas anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm really <laughs> curious to see. And the last time we put on by ourselves a, a big event like this... Um, it's been was, a while, right? was Ohio was before it? COVID. was right when COVID hit. Years was, ago. was Ohio. And it was one of our biggest it, events. It, I think ma- it reminds me of... Um, Working in gyms uh, when I meet with people. That's the one thing we lacked or, or we missed doing this is we don't get to see the people that we're impacting or working with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So these live, that's why they feel rejuvenating is it, is it brings me back to when I would train clients and work in gyms. Like you get to see the person's face and hear from them what's working, what's not working, what we did right or wrong. Otherwise, we're just talking, you know, to the camera. This is potential to be one of the. How do you know what the room size is? Do you know how many available seats and tickets? I believe room? it holds over two hundred people. Okay, over okay. two hundred. Yeah. So it's and it's June fifteenth. This year. June fifteenth, okay. Bellagio. Mindpumplive.com. So you can go. Oh, we have the tickets. website set up already. Yeah. yeah ready oh, to go. good. Oh, good. Ready to go. Oh, good job, so team. Yeah. Dude, I got to tell you guys. Bellagio. Speaking of travel, so <laughs> I forgot to tell you guys this last time. So we're out in Orlando. And, you know, Doug and I typically share a room mm-hmm. and I know you and Justin typically share a room. Yeah. And I'm in there and, you know, we've all been working together now, what, nine years now has it been? Yeah. At least nine? Uh, yeah. How many times have we seen Doug lose his shit? Like once, maybe. A handful. Yeah, maybe. Most. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Once or twice. Like it's very rare. But I think it's two times. Yeah. That's but it. when you see it, it's like, he's the nicest guy in the world. Okay. Period. End of story. One of the nicest people you ever meet. But when he gets angry, it's scary. It's a little, little frightening. So, he, <laughs> he doesn't have a medium. No, bro. The damn throttle, huh? Bro, we're in the room and we're sleeping. <laughs> and I don't know what happened. That Somebody set our alarm to 6 a.m. In Which the room. is happened, 3 a.m. Pacific, by the that way. That happened to you guys too, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So my theory is that- well, I had left before that. Because yeah. they uh, they come in and clean the room. It's so easy to set it and not and turn it on and off it, that the cleaners- Was that the default, 6 a.m.? It must be because it was in, in my room. My room did the same thing too. When Doug came down that morning and told me, I was so like, oh night, shit, mine did too. So the night before, Doug already had poor sleep. <laughs> so he's already like- Well, yeah, we were up that. with trainers till yeah. 11 p.m. at night. Like we did the live event and then like usual, we hung around with everybody for- for an extra what three hours yeah, or more yeah. or whatever and so we were up all night mind you we're also on california time to doug's point so and we're travel like, and all that yeah right? the three hour difference <laughs> and so we're hitting the sack so, we're, so that night doug got poor sleep i got the okay sleep but he was i remember he woke up and he's like oh i had terrible sleep and that's when we were teasing him because he tried to sleep in or whatever so anyway that night we go to bed and i you know doug's like hey sal do you have anything for sleep so i'm giving him like you know try try this you know supplement it'll help you and he's we're all ready room's all dark ready to go go to bed or whatever Anyway, I hear the alarm go off and Doug turns over and I can hear him like messing with it, trying to turn it off and he can't figure it out right now. I'm like, oh, cool. He's got it. So I'll just keep my eye mask on and stay quiet over here. <laughs> so I hear him try to fuck with it. Right. And then I hear him. I hear the, I hear the, you know, when, you, when the Doug meter goes, beep, 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 right. So and then I hear him go, <laughs> fuck, fuck, fuck. And then I hear him stand up and I hear him hitting the fucking, <laughs> hitting it. and then I hear him you trying to it. rip it off the wall. <laughs> And I hear him go. For sure, I've done this. I hear thing. him. I hate this fucking hotel. I hate this fucking. And he, I hear him ripping it off the wall, bro. And I'm like, I'm gonna pretend like I'm sleepy too. I don't want to get in the way of this. And he finally figured it out. I, 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 no, knew, th- I didn't figure it out. I hit snooze. Oh yeah, and no, so it stopped. Yeah, and ten minutes up. later, oh, it went even again. Worse. That's when he got up. Yeah, uh, he was trying to rip it off the yeah. wall, bro. Like I could hear him like struggling. Like, I mean, so the night before that. Yeah. I had woken up around 3 a.m. and I could not go back to sleep. And so I was underslept going into that yeah, night. Yeah. And then, okay, you wake me up at 6 a.m. And then I hit the snooze button, not knowing, because I couldn't see anything. And uh, it, 10 minutes later, so I just knew my morning was ruined. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and uh, I'll be the first to uh, acknowledge that. I'm a real bear if I don't get to sleep. Okay? <laughs> He's a funny bear though too, like the way he is when yeah. he gets upset because I didn't, so he comes down, he, uh, so Justin's gone, right? Justin took off at four in the morning. Yeah. So Justin leaves at four in the morning. I hear him get up at four. Yeah, My fun. alarm goes off at six. So yeah, woke up at four, yeah, woke up at six. Yeah. And then I agreed to go down and meet. So there was issues, right? Some of these yeah. trainers- Very nice of you. Didn't make the live event. And so, because the flights were all because the flights, because they had like hurricane weather there. And Jason was like, dude, these people are literally coming to see you guys more than my event. 
you know, would you hang around? I'm like, oh man, we all got, I said, Justin's out at four in the morning. I said, Sal's got to go to Texas and do an interview. I said, well, you know, Doug and I could possibly come down there. And so I said, I'll, I'll show up, you know, so I, I could be there for our people and stuff. And so, yeah, that was at what, 7.30 or 8? 7 30 i think yeah so seven so yeah. seven thirty or so right so you know i i roll down there and doug's down there and i could see he's still fuming from that Whoa. and he's telling me the story and i'm like oh she's having me too and he's like and you can see him i'm gonna file a complaint yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i was like you do that Doug. Go. hey but just hearing him yanking <laughs> against the wall because i hear him and i hear him going fucking hotel hey fucking hotel yeah. and, <laughs> and i'm like oh shit dude. i'm gonna pretend like, you know you just pretend to sleep uh, <laughs> i've got a knowledge that they have very solid alarm clocks in those rooms yeah, dude, they're like they're, they're like taped down yeah. definitely one of my <laughs> least favorite hotels what would you have done with it if you ripped it off the wall just throw on the floor go back to I, was, sleep? I was willing to crush it yeah. Yeah, yeah. seriously yeah. i mean yeah the king kong that thing yeah, yeah. oh it's so great oh, yeah. it's a good time yeah no he's funny when he gets mad because it doesn't happen very often it doesn't happen uh, very yeah. often <laughs> he's and he's different than the rest of us the yeah, way he yeah, acts yeah, with yeah, it yeah, so yeah. you probably I, get mad the most I would say. <laughs> that happens regularly <laughs> probably second is me justin doesn't get mad that often I've, hey i haven't been mad in a while when was the last time that we got we got into it uh, we, we uh, well, not what well, we this. got into it, but you getting <laughs> yeah. mad. Uh, uh, well, what kind of what level of mad? There's levels to this, yeah. isn't there? There's like yeah, there's I mean, irritated. There's, there's, there's like that's it. They're fired. Frustrated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. there's that level, which You're is not like, coming back with a job. It's like half half serious, half yeah, yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? And then there's you get like, irritated often, yeah, but like, then level like we were really mad. Uh, not super often, I guess. Yeah, right? like it's. I don't think it's. I think it's been a while. I can't even remember the last once a week. Get out of here with that. No, I'm just kidding. I can't even remember the last thing that I was like. Get louder when you talk to each other, and one person person's frustrated yeah, yeah it's, it's a, a louder, yeah. louder i got louder, i got louder. dude i had a little moment of self-reflection in uh, oh god you got mad at our staff I'm dude so I felt this so guy bad, gets dude. this guy gets all lit up on our our and i let me tell you i think our girls are phenomenal they are right? dude, katrina the katrina and job. jerry the keep this business afloat they're when it best. comes to if it like if it wasn't for them we wouldn't make any flights. We wouldn't be able to do any events. We wouldn't be able to host guests. We wouldn't be doing none of that stuff. No, they're the best. And so I got I got mad because I don't remember. Oh, because I didn't get my boarding pass, and then they didn't put me in the right line. And I'm supposed to get this ticket and that, and I'm waiting, and I'm like, oh, I'm going to be late, and I hate doing this anyway. And so I'm texting them. <laughs> yeah. I'm texting them like back and forth, and I'm kind of like, well, next time do this, and I'm coming across as a dick, and I know it, and as I'm doing it. So then I call them down, like, what am I doing, man? So I text them both out, you know, individually, separately. I'm like, listen, I'm really sorry. I was a total dick. Well, you didn't deserve that. It started the day before. <laughs> yeah. The day before, you were a dick to him when the, the interviewer messed up the room number. Oh, yeah. That, oh, yeah. <laughs> so when Sal travels, if he's not with one of us, the girls know, like they got to be on full alert. Like Jerry sends an itinerary well, with lost. him. I want to know Jerry sends a message in the morning. Katrina's got her phone on yeah. like right away, high alert. Yeah. So yeah. if Sal calls, I got to make sure right next to the bed, yeah, make oh. sure we can tell Sal right where his car is yeah, at. When is this, when is stuff like that. So they're already on high alert when you're alone. And <laughs> so terrible. he's texting first thing in the morning, which by the way, you're texting at like seven in the morning, which is four in the morning back in, you know, what? In Kelvin, and he's that. like pissed what off. What room is this? Where, where, where am I supposed to be? And then come to find out, the, and I think it was Courtney who shared the, and I should, and Lou Perga, she's part of this, keeping us together too. So Courtney, Jerry, and Katrina really keep us together. And Courtney's like, hey, here's the email. This is the room number gave. And so the guy had like, it was like 1745. Was and he gave, he gave yeah. 1475. It was like, <laughs> it was all messed up. And well, so, I went up to the floor hella early the day <laughs> after. I'm already tired. And I go up there and I'm like, this room doesn't exist. And I go down the front desk. I'm like, can you bring me to 1477? So, so and they're like, we don't have a 1477. So I'm like, that's when I started like, you know, kind of feeling. I know, dude. I'm sorry. Yeah, so you lift them up on that day and then the airport. And I'm like, bro, you're first class. Just fucking walk up to the front to no, the first I'm class sorry, and just dude. they'll take care of everything. I apologize right away. <laughs> mm -hmm. Within 10 minutes, I said I was sorry. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. Good self-awareness, though. I mean, hey, 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 listen. It is, bro. And that's also, you got to have that self-awareness because uh, in the past, I would have justified it. I think if I, if this was like, you know, Sal, younger Sal, well, whatever. You know, they, they, I paid him. That's their job or whatever type of deal. I had that yeah. attitude. Yeah, yeah. But no, you got to, yeah, I got to look at myself and say, I was a dick for sure. Well, I, I mean, remember. I think even like Katrina, I think has some of the best attitude. In fact, she's always talking to the other ladies, like when they get frustrated with any of us like that. And she's like, why do you get frustrated at that? And they're like, what do you mean? He's a dreaming of Dirk or this, that. It's like, 
That's job security for you. The fact that he sucks at all those things. <laughs> I like he threw us all in there. So You're talking about me right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I get looped in that category too. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? True, I definitely, true. I'm definitely uh, known for coming and getting pissed off. I can off. tell Katrina's been married to you for a while because she knows how to talk to me. She's like, you're great at this. Like, this is what you're supposed <laughs> yeah. to do. You're the best at this. I'm like, yeah, right. Adam's coached you. Yeah, you know, she's been closing. She's been closing me for 13 know, years. Know, yeah, dude. so she knows. How, she, well, she always yeah. says that too. She's like, he is just like you. You guys are so similar in so many ways. You guys oh, have the same frustrations and stuff. But yeah, no, she does a really good job of like reminding the team that is like, listen, like that be grateful. I mean, the reason why these guys have outsourced this and are willing to pay you good money, full-time jobs to, to basically handle them is because that's what they don't like to do and they're not good at it. And so what comes with that is sometimes it doesn't work out or there's a misunderstanding or miscommunication. Could you imagine if we had to organize like it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't happen. We would give up the money. We would give up the opportunity. We'd just be like, "Yeah, forget it. We got to do that." Like, too much work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Too much work. To get there. Yeah, yeah. Too much work and effort to get there. Uh, hey, you know what? Though I tell you what, though that's a um, you know, I, I talk to business operators all the time, and it's like a, I think it's a very important skill set. It's the number one advice I always talk about that it was ever given to me, which is, you know, don't focus on the things that you're not good at. Focus on what you're good at and be fucking great. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs struggle with that. You know, most entrepreneurs treat their business like their child totally. and their baby, and totally. they're very protective, very part of it. And, you know, totally. part of learning to be able to scale to a, another level beyond yourself is being okay with letting go of these parts of it. And it's something that I think that- It makes no sense to try to do everything all the time. I mean, it's like, like look at a, a, a successful, you know, athletic team. Like you wouldn't want the quarterback to also be the linebacker to also be the whatever it's like you're good at your job just do that and do that freaking well and don't worry we'll, t we'll handle the other parts of it that's the best way to do it mm -hmm. plus it makes your work enjoyable like if i had to do all that stuff yeah exactly oh i'd be pulling my hair out it'd be absolutely terrible yeah anyway yeah. i want to ask you justin about this now i see you have a note there that says household dust is that referring to how you've cured your ashy skin with <laughs> caldera well you know what's <laughs> funny about that like 80 percent of household dust is skin skin Wow. 80? It's high. Yeah. That's gross. Really? I feel so much it's better so about my disgusting. air filter now. <laughs> oh, that's gross. <laughs> I feel so we much better. We shed way more than I think. Is that really true? Realize. Fact check that, Doug. That's a, I think it's true, actually. Right. Yeah. He's 80? Right. That's a He's lot. Right. Actually, I, not, no, kid, since I, I don't got, know about the percentage, to be honest. Like, well, I've, I mean, even if it's over but 50, it's high. if it's over 50, that's a lot. Yeah, yeah, since yeah. I brought up Caldera, though, you, like you used yeah. to have. The, <laughs> sorry, bro. It used to be so It's fine. You can say it. looks amazing. Yeah, well, here's the thing, too. And like, I just since we traveled to Orlando and then I went to the desert again. So I spent like four days or so at the desert and it just dried me the hell out, you know, <coughs> being in that environment, same thing in Truckee, like, and I have to like yeah. really be intentional about either lotion or like, you know, adding in uh caldera. And I, so it started out in the face, but then I just started rubbing it on my arms and on my hands. And it makes a massive difference. Dude. I you do. I do the same thing. And the, you went to Palm desert I went to Utah, which yeah. is like dry desert <laughs> land too. And I'm the same way. I go from one. You know what's crazy other, about oh, this, yeah. <clears throat> by the way, is I have right. oily skin. So you have dry skin. I have oily skin. You have psoriasis issues. Yeah. But, and yours is kind of dry, oily. I think. Yeah, yeah right. I have like a middle. I'm oily as hell. It works on my skin just like it does on yours. So yeah. it doesn't like make it's me bizarre. Yeah. yeah. Very strange. Well, some are saying this dust st uh, statistic is not correct. It's not 80% uh, skin. It says it's, uh, you know, hair, pollen, uh, paper fiber, fibers, soil, things like that, and a very small percentage of skin. Because I was just thinking about, I'm like, that, you know how much <laughs> dust you breathe in? Like, how disgusting is that? It that you're like so breathing gross. in other people's bodies? I like, hope it's it. not true. Yeah. yeah. Was, you know, along those lines, do you, know how, do you know how many of us have, like, do you know we have mites? I think they have mites. Don't we have mites in our eyes and on our, look that up, Doug. Yeah. I'm almost sure <laughs> yeah. that we have little critters. Well, yeah. Our, isn't that when you, when you, you like close your eyes, you can see, you can see things moving, can't no, you? That's not the mites, bro. What is that? <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's not. That's uh, those are like a floaters, the right? floaters, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's floaters. Yeah, what are floaters? Huh? Yeah, black spots in your eyes. There's... No, you you could see like little like like movements. Yeah, I you think see... that's like uh, I think that's the fluid. If in your you close, eyes. if fluid. you close your close your eyes and you like look at a light like long enough, like you'll start to see like movement and stuff. That's, no, that's retinal damage. It's <laughs> 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 off. No, I've read about like skin Early mites and stuff. Look, look that yeah. up because I I think that's true. Right? Isn't that a thing? Like like that's why you have to change your pillowcase so often and and stuff like that. It's disgusting. It's like little spiders. Yeah, so almost everyone has what's called demodex mites living on their skin. That's gross. Yeah, little spiders bro, all, over, all over your skin. Right? Lovely. I love that commercial. Is that, is that, is that, is that, they're going to hear that part. Yeah, they're, they're, 
<laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> you grossed everybody out. Well, exactly. maybe my house had 80% skin. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's probably. <laughs> I think mean, it just depends, right? Justin looks like a power lifter all the time. Just I, <laughs> I, I carry that everywhere I go now, though, because yeah. it's the, it's been that like game changer for me yeah. as far as how my and I'm the same way too. Like I start with like rubbing on my face on my top of my head, and then like whatever's left over my hands, I just rub into my a elbows. Goes my a long way, yeah, too. it does. Doug, I want you to look something up. Justin and I actually were reading about this on our own individually. We don't even communicating have you ever heard oh of, yeah have you ever heard of uh acquired savant syndrome can you look that up doug <laughs> yeah did you hey listen let let me hear it. That's <laughs> because you're gonna get you need to close me on how you have it no uh, <laughs> if I anybody <laughs> it should happen to me but it didn't yeah. <laughs> that's the annoying part oh it's like a concussion yeah, yeah. thing yes look yeah, it up read yeah, about yeah. it oh uh, well you trauma. Were, we've seen those in like movies before right where it's, it's like someone real. has like a head trauma and also they're brilliant or something after yes dude oh, have, it really does happen i have two examples of it maybe yeah, doug can look I have this a case study for it too acquired savant syndrome is the presentation of often extraordinary scholarly skills that can emerge after a non-disabled individual suffers a traumatic brain injury. Okay, so illness. traumatic brain injury, yeah. Okay, so let's go down this rabbit hole a little bit. That doesn't that make you think like that that is kind of like it's different if you uh <laughs> can recall memories or something like that, but it like if all of a sudden you have this crazy brilliance about you that that was like it's, it's been weird. the whole time. It, 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 I guess under my thought process it's like there's there's a sort of a function of your brain that's um, capable of, let's say, like processing high numbers or, or you know, like figuring out these equations and uh, or like listening to music and you can break it down and you can like, you know, all have I, I feel like it's just it, it's dormant. Right. Or it's like you're, you don't um, in terms of like uh, the, the part of your brain that you're using primarily is where your focus is. Well, well it's almost like, it's almost like you've heard the stat that we only use like 10% of our brains. That's not true though. Yeah. What is it? Is it, is it, but it's a low no, percent. You use your whole brain, but it's like the, like the, 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 it's not a statistic, but it's like, basically you're not using your brain to its fullest capacity. Well, so, saying. okay. So let's, let's use that as an example, even though it's not the greatest example. Yeah. It's like, it's almost like we're all using a different 10%. Yeah, you know, because there's some people that have this extraordinary brilliance in the structure that it's like it's innate. There's they did not like train it a certain way, and they just have well, it. They I'm going to tell you about some of these, right? Mm -hmm. So here's there's one woman yeah. I'm reading about. She's uh, let's see, she woke up from a coma and spoke fluent French. She never visited France before. See, like how how is that possible? So, she did. So she did. Bizarre. Listen to this. She did German and French at O level. So she took like a beginner class thirty years earlier. All of a sudden, she wakes up from a coma. And people were, and she had to speak French. She's speaking fluently to the nurses. See, that's weird. Bro. Weird, bro. Then there's another guy who woke up from a, uh, let me read about this guy. He woke up from a driving accident and he became a piano savant. All of a sudden he could see music yeah. in his mind. Yeah, I know about that one. How, yeah, this, so there was, how does this happen? There was two. There was this, this guy that um, he was coming out of a, a bar and these two individuals like attacked him and like um, basically slammed him like, into the cement and hit him in the back of the head. And then he had like traumatic brain injury, like in, and suffered. I think he was in a, a partial coma, but yeah, he woke up and, and could, he was like a brilliant, brilliant mathematician. Just all of a sudden he, he he's like hated math. He's like, I avoided it at all costs. And all of a sudden now it just all of a sudden clicked and he actually started to, and they showed that he started to see the world in mathematical equations in terms of like the angles, ge geometric ang angles yes. and the formulas. And he's like, he's, you know, putting it all together. He's like, why do I know this? Well, it's weird. Out it's it. so weird because the guy that I, that I was talking about who could play the piano, he could play a host of instruments. He's like, I've never taken a music lesson. I've never learned anything. Yeah. All of a sudden, how? <laughs> isn't it weird? It's like, do we acquire knowledge or do we discover it? Is it always there? Right. right. Are we tapping into something that's out there? Yeah, yeah. Extracting it. Yeah. This is how, how about this for a theory is our, our heads are just an antenna yeah, and then yeah. you, by banging your head like, like that, you just, signal. you just switch your, uh, <laughs> like, like when we were kids, the frequency, like when yeah. we were kids, you had to hit the t the TV. I don't know. It trips me out though, hearing stuff <laughs> like that. Cause <laughs> it makes you really like trying to, how, how do you explain that? 
you have to, you either have to breathe some crazy radical thing that you're, you know, you're the third person to use this body or whatever like that, or oh, that yeah. you're an antenna just getting some information from somewhere else. How or, sad if you're listening right now and you're like, I, I hit my head and I just, I can't see straight now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just dumber. <laughs> yeah, just, I've been working through it, man. That's a, why didn't that happen to me, dude? <laughs> Bullshit. Yeah. Don't go try this at home, everybody. I want to be smarter. Dude. Yeah. I've been taking all the peptides. Did it, uh, so since you both kind of read this, is uh, like, is there uh, like how many cases? Super rare. It's like super, super yeah, rare. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's documented, but it's super rare. And they don't have any idea. What are the theories behind it? I'd love to see what is Yeah, that that's say? what I want to know. I want to hear what the doctors are saying. Like, what are, <laughs> there's the are emerging data that when the left anterior lobe of the brain involved in language, emotional regulation and social skills becomes less responsive due to the damage, the parts of the brain involved in visual processes become more responsive. So, so it's, that would explain allocating. Yeah, yeah, but that okay. So that would explain somebody who like uh, never played music, and then also they, they can see music, and now they learn to play. That would not explain the girl who wakes up and is speaking French fluently. I know, well, I especially know. if she hasn't been uh, influenced by that, or like been in an environment where everybody speaks. That's what I mean. Yes. Or the guy who's never yeah. like Look never. This, that doesn't make any sense. The art, the, it also talks about how some people with a certain type of dementia, frontotemporal dementia. Like one, this person says that they've seen dementia patients without prior artistic talent blossom into excellent painters, sculptors, and gardeners. Man, there's so much we don't know about the brain, which leads me to yep. like really skepticism over whether or not we can make uh, machines intelligent. We don't know how the brain, we don't have any clue yeah. how the brain really does half the stuff. It's not straightforward. And we're going to try and make a machine smart, right? No, like, it's no. just going to be a super sophisticated Google. Well, it's not going to be. Or a, it's going to turn into a demon. Like what's? <laughs> that's a bit of a leap, but yeah. Consumed. Maybe is it? Yeah. I, don't know. I know you like Justin's AI Satan like that's theory. The Antichrist. Theory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah just, I mean, you know, maybe like every great civilization come really close, and then there's this major disaster that stops oh, it. Right? Yeah. We're going to be when, when we're all like, ah, oh no, just to be like, I told you. I told you, you yeah, <laughs> great. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of good has done us now. You guys. <laughs> Satan Skynet. Hey, I want to bring up a, a, an, an article that I think a lot of people get misled by um, reports on economics. So I'm going to bring up this article uh, that talked about how I think a lot of people get misled on all articles. And yeah. All well, this is a, this is a, this is a big one because you'll see more and more yeah. of this in uh, this year because it's an election year. And the the title of the article says, "The top one percent of American earners." now own more wealth than the entire Oh, you're class. bringing that article up. I'm yeah. glad you, you tweeted about that. <laughs> I did. You tweeted it. I shared it with you first. Or yes. no, Jackie shared Jackie it with you. Jackie shared it first. Yeah. And then uh, you tweeted about how, you know, this is ridiculous because it's not how the economy works. No, no. So so if you hear that, you know, that title, right? So the top 1% of Americans have more wealth than the entire middle class. What you think is that, the, that all of the wealth, it's this pie of economic wealth. And if more, if this people over here have more then these people over here have less, but that's not how economics works. The way economics works is the entire pie grows. That's right. Now the challenge is if you have a certain amount of wealth, your wealth is probably going to grow faster than somebody with less wealth. The easy example would be if, if Adam and I invested money in the stock market with the same exact stocks, he put 10 grand, I put a hundred grand. We both grow 10%. I'm going to get more money than he will because yes. 10% of 100 is way more than 10%. And the, 10, to continue 000. that example, the at, simultaneously <laughs> that the those wealthier are have more more money than the, the middle class there, there's more uh, people that were poor that are out of poverty now. Yes. So to your point of it's growing uh -huh. and so yeah, it's totally an alarmist. It's an alarmist thing, but that's that's going to happen in no matter in, what in market economy. In a, in a healthy and to try to balance it out, what you end up doing is crushing the whole thing. Yeah, is what the what the data shows. So. And, yeah, exactly. No, I thought. And that there's was... no way to balance it out. You want the you, you want that kind of growth, and it just it, it just works out that way. But it doesn't mean other people have less. It just means. You know, the the one percent have more money to invest, more money to take risks on, and they're going to grow. They're going to get more money than the everybody else because of the amount of money they already have. You know, I'd also love to see a, a a study go right alongside that of uh, happiness with those people too. Oh, the, you know, there's this mis. Everybody thinks he's just I know. So happy there's this misconception of like, oh, if you have all this stuff or you have all the money, that you're so much happier than these these other people. It's like. 
happiness is an internal thing, dude. Yeah. It's not, it's not external. It's not a, a level of toys or money. <laughs> There's a point where once you have security and enough to survive that that diminishes rapidly. Yep. Yep. And in fact, it, and, and this is for sure, it, everything that I've read or seen and in my experience, some of the wealthiest people are some of the most miserable fucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Wait, I've seen, I've met way, way happier people that make an average yeah. amount of money. But Bro, it's so weird. Happy from inside. It's so weird how we place certain people on a pedestal. Like um, uh, Marilyn Monroe is a good example, right? Oh my God, she's an icon. Marilyn, all these young girls. Oh, she's so awesome. All these women. Oh, she's so amazing. She was she was abused. She then she did drugs. Then she died at a young death because of the abuse. Why are we idolizing this character? Yeah. It's wild. We do this so often with uh, wealth and fame and power and pleasure. We look at these people and we go, "Oh, that person's so awesome." They died at twenty six from a drug overdose. They were so tortured that they killed <laughs> themselves. Oh. Why are we idolizing? It's crazy to me. Yeah, it's look up a staff. Yeah, I'm just since we're talking about this, and I've, I've actually been meaning to look this up. What percentage of of drug and alcohol abuse happens in like uh, rich and famous people? Like something something along those lines. Mm. Maybe. Oh, you, I wonder if they would. Yeah. Well, like uh, what would you? How yeah. Would you how would you word wealth it? and you're a better and drug Googler addiction? than I am. What would you Google? <laughs> Googler. You are a better Googler. <laughs> well, Sal's the Googler. best Googler here. That's how I dress up for Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Master Googler. <laughs> the Googler. Yeah. Google I, I don't even know Googler. if you, you would have data like that. Um, I wouldn't, I would guess that wealth is not connected to it because oftentimes the skills associated with doing better are also skills of being able to restrain and whatever. Absolutely. Delayed but gratification. Mean, yes. But it doesn't mean the money is what gives them. So maybe the famous. So look up oh, famous that's people. That's a whole, that's a, yeah. That's so a that's different. a different monster. So maybe yeah. look up fame, what, how much uh, alcohol and drugs are abused in famous people. That's a great example. I wonder how many parents today, if they had the opportunity to have their kid be famous would take that opportunity because of the money, even though we know for a fact that the vast majority of kids that become famous end up really messed up. Really messed up. Like it's yeah. one of the worst, if you have kids, one of the worst possible things that could happen to them is they become famous. Terrible idea. If you just look at the data. Yeah. Like that is the worst thing that could happen to you. Uh -huh. One of the worst things that could and happen to you. And I bet to your point about, you know, the, the, the disciplines that it takes to become very wealthy, it requires delayed gratification, sacrifice for yeah. future use, stuff like that. And so those are all good behaviors. Yeah probably a very lower percentage of drug and alcohol abuse, but fame. So athletes, singers, stars, people like that, where there's this, this windfall, windfall yeah. of money yeah. at once, right. uh, the abuse of yeah. drug and alcohol, I bet is extremely yeah. high. Well, it's how fake love, right? Fame is like empty love. I could, I can imagine how that would really destroy, especially a young person. You have all this attention and then you lose it. And then is it real? Right. That's got to be torture. Do you think you ever went through a phase in your life where you sought after that or you never. thought you wanted that? Or I did never. you guys ever admire? Like, you know, I never I like was into like famous people. Never. I'm so like people, I get no. teased all the time when someone's just like, they say a name that's like an actor or actress. And I'm like, who's that? Yeah. And they're like, how do you not know who that is? The most person that and I'm like, I just don't follow that stuff. <laughs> no very much like did you guys were you guys ever like that never. i was never really interested i i mean the closest probably for me it was musicians bands yeah just because i was doing the thing back then i it was more for me as a passion you know yeah i feel fun. like that's different because you're it's like you're admiring their craft and you're right. you're pursuing that same craft and so that's a little different that's yeah. almost like smart like it's like it'd be smart for if I was a new trainer to admire really good trainers and pay attention and follow them. Not yeah. because I, I'm yeah, like, I want to like, be them. What are they doing uh, yeah, in their yeah. lifestyle and their marriage and their kids and you know, and how are they eating? What are they eating today? Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I don't give a shit. What you got Doug? I'm not getting any real stats as far as how many percentage You're is. Not a very uh, good Googler, huh? I am not. No, <laughs> but you know, it is an issue in Hollywood for yeah, sure. Drug yeah. and alcohol abuse. And I mean, there's a number of reasons listed, of course, highly competitive, lots of pressure, lots of harsh criticism, child stars being thrown into an adult world, uh, child stars in particular. Well, I are, wonder why that's a, like, if that's a hard stat to find. That should be a really easy stat to there, build a track. Gotta, there's got to be some. But I think, you know, more than the average person, probably. Oh, I, you God, know, yes. the, 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 the philosophers and, and, and spiritual leaders would say, I brought this up before that, uh, that, you know, they would, they refer to it as sin or mistake, right? That it leads to bigger, you know, sin. So it's like, oh, I'm getting some fame. I want more of it. I want more of it. And it tends to lead us down this path of, it's like, uh, rock stars with uh, like their, their, their sexual exploits. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I can get this many. Oh, I want more. I want more. I want more. Next thing you know, they're doing, you know, crazy stuff and still feeling totally empty. Like when Dan Bilzerian came out, he just recently is like, 
Yeah, that wasn't as cool as I thought it would be. <laughs> yeah, monogamy. Yeah, it's pro monogamy. <laughs> I, I think know, that's yeah. I think that's great. I think that's so hilarious. Know, it's, it's so wild. good though. It's so good for it's full circle. And yeah. I'm glad that he came out and he he at least said that and admitted that because you have so many probably young boys that follow him and like that's what I want. Yeah, like yeah. I want to have the yacht and the chicks all over me every day. And it looks it looks cool. You know, yeah. there was a time for sure in my 20s where. I remember when we first went to on it and I remember walking in there going like, man, when I was 20 as a trainer, like I was thinking like, this is what I'd want to build. Like yeah. this, just like this, just hot chicks everywhere. My own gym, work mm -hmm. out whenever I want. Everybody walks around, follows me around and say, like, yeah, do you need coffee? And he's like, I totally would have thought that was <laughs> sick. I, I would have thought that that was reaching it. I mean, in my twenties, I did, I believe that, yeah. you know, and then you kind of, you realize that that's not all it's cracked up to be. So it's cool to see that he came out and at least talked about that and admitted that because yeah. that's part of his brand when you think about it. That's kind of a, 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 not that the guy needs any money, but it's like a risky thing to say if yeah. you've been building yourself as this kind of Hugh Hefner mm -hmm. of modern time and you basically come out and say, you know, you're probably better have you, off. Have you heard the conspiracy around, by the way, Hugh Hefner in the, in the Playboy Mansion? Have you heard about that? That there's underground tunnels yeah. and that the, that the grotto, it was also a way for them to film celebrities and politicians mm -hmm. doing compromising stuff to be used in blackmail. Have you heard about this? Yeah. Apparently, well, Justin knows, yeah. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these, <laughs> these parties and, I mean, you start looking at it now with different eyes after Epstein Island and mm. then you, you see just like, yeah, that's, like like i said before like that's currency like that's that's something that like if you're trying to get a role if you're trying to get you know further in that industry in that career like some people will take that path where it's like well i'm going to get something on this person and this is going to be valuable for this person so they they exchange that information and then it ruins somebody's career meanwhile elevating their own and it's just the whole yeah. thing so i i know i'm the least conspiratorial here right but I definitely don't doubt that. Like that for sure happens. Yeah. What I'm curious about is to what level and like amount. Like yeah. there, one hundred percent, there is manipulative people that are smart enough to see that play and to know to use yeah. that. Right. Yeah. Like what I'm so. What I'm more curious about is like how intertwined. And how deep is it? How now? deep is it? Is it's it like, like you don't want to know? Yeah. Is it like you won't eighty percent? I, I think my my thought is that I think people just won't believe it. Agreed. You know, yep. it, it's so deep and it's so far that like, because if you start looking at just the statistics of people that have uh, been gone missing after being in a state park or like, yeah. and you start looking at all these underground tunnels Have you heard they that? discovered. All these underground tunnels and shit in state parks. And how the, it all oh, leads yeah. to um, these, these loading docks and, and bays and things where they can ship people out in containers and. Um, you know, and then you start looking at different like organizations that are for charity, but they're helping kids. But wait a minute, you know, like there's dude, there's it's just gross, so, wrong, and in in it's so much to to take in that you just you want don't to push look. it off. So yeah. well, you, to that point, I thought this was really interesting. I saw somebody comment in our private forum about this conversation we're having right now about how the two of you are like the conspiracy guys, and yeah. I'm like I kind of balance this out a little bit yeah. to challenge that. And their comment was that like, it's so just, this is all bullshit and it's just another way to divide us. And I'm like, I don't understand how these conspiracy, like there's like different levels of conspiracies for me. Like there's like conspiracies yes. that I think are like, yeah. you know, political yeah. agenda, like conspiracies yeah. that try and get you sway left or right. But then there's stuff that's like, it doesn't matter you're left, yeah. right or whatever. That's just fucked up and bad and wrong yeah. and evil. Like, where is that dividing us? Like, I guess it divides good and evil. And so, and I'd like to be on the good side. <laughs> well, I think they, they'll use consp like conspiracy theories can often be fake too, and they'll yeah. use them as as in, in ways to discredit the other side. Misinformation campaigns. And, yeah. And here's a, here's what you need to look into. Area fifty one was was is, a misinformation. Campaign. What programs we've used uh, in intelligence agencies to overthrow other other governments? Yeah. Just look into that. Yeah, yeah. And then look at if they were if they were to do that to the American people from the inside, what that would look just like. Just look up well, Operation Northwood. That's a, that's a real well, thing. Well, I, I really Start thought, there. I thought, I actually thought that that documentary, uh, the octopus murders did a really good job yeah. of, you know, not going crazy deep down, but like, uh, like showing like literally the way this reporter had like found all the stuff and it's like I, I didn't feel like it was far-fetched or reaching to this yeah. like crazy i mean I, they obviously hit the jfk thing a little bit which that was like that kind of blew my mind to see that 
but it wasn't like they spent a lot of time on making that be like the the, the grand. They, once they wait a yeah. certain amount of years, then they'll come out and admit shit what happened. Like, oh, Martin Luther King, yes, civil lawsuit, yeah, the CIA killed him. They'll admit that now. That's out there. Yeah. JFK, they admit it. CIA killed him. Like yeah. that's that's something they'll say now. If once you have so much time, yeah, then they'll come out and be like, yeah, that. Happened. I think for me, it's more like I'm just skeptical in general of anybody in a position of power, and that's kind of where my. Um, I'm with you on that. You know, just just where just I, someone I who sit, seeks that. I just sit that yes. in that space first, uh, and then, you know, just with that mentality, I kind of wait to see uh, what in, uh, like un, unvelops from there in terms of like actual evidence. And so, like, yes, like most things will bring up, like, yeah, I've heard of that, I've read about that. Like, yeah. I'm not 100 percent bought into it. Uh, it, you know, as like full blown. Yes, I believe this. I believe yeah. that, and I believe aliens. I believe, you know. But I'm I'm definitely have heard of it, read of it because I'm interested in it. But at the same time, I'm sitting back to wait to see when it actually some of all this rolls yeah, out. Some of it's just fun. So what? Okay, what would you guys do? Okay, if what? your kid said, "I want to be the president when I grow up," I no. would be like, "Man, I messed up." <laughs> yeah. Why do you want? Why, why? do you want that? Yeah, I, why? It's, yeah. I mean, it's kind of a like a very popular thing that you see. Like you know, like parents are so proud. Like, oh, my kid aspires to be the president. Like. Mm. You, have you seen it? You've seen it in movies. You've heard people yeah. talk about it. Do you think that. we've actually elected, you know, a common person? Yeah, I know. I mean, or do you think we've elected anybody fucking good, period? Yeah. <laughs> like, well, like they haven't already been pre-selected. Someone who desires to, to really rule and have power and, and it really desires that, you get, that's already a self-selection bias for probably more likely than average to be a sociopath. Yeah. You know? Is that like that person that wants that? I want to be that person in charge. Yeah. I want to be the, the front guy. That's yeah. why it's like, an, it's an impossible <clears throat> task to defend the person who is in power ever. I don't care if you're right or left. Yeah. Like, well, hey, know. George Washington, he won the well, Revolutionary yeah. War and they said, we'll make you king. And he said, no. Yeah, that's respectable. That that's, was real. It's amazing. That yeah. was real. Where do you think, we, where do you think, we? What, what, when did it start to go the other direction, you think, where it started to get, because like, you're probably right. Like the origin of the way we run our government was probably in a, from from a very healthy good place. Yeah. At some point, it started to take a. Real, I think it's always been like a the New Deal. I think it's always been a struggle. Once we, we got the intelligence had, agencies. Yeah, and in the, the when was that? When was when was CIA born? Oh man, when the Cold War really ramped shit up. What year? What year is that, Doug? CIA born? <clears throat> yeah, because between that and the Federal Reserve. Yeah. I think those were two major. Yeah, the Fed, Fed, came, Fed came first. Major Fed came first. Points. Yeah, Fed, and that was first. that was a long time. FBI. Uh, they, then they did the FBI during. I think it was for alcohol prohibition, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, 1947, the yeah. CIA. Yeah. yeah. So and you know, here's the deal. You yeah. have a we situation been fucked for a long time. Well, you have a situation. <laughs> Almost where you have, I think years. it started well before then. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you yeah. think even before then? Oh, way before then. Yeah. I mean, like you say, the Federal Reserve. That's that was one of the first ones. Yeah. Well, have you ever heard of you ever you ever read about how they voted on that? And yes. All the people that were there and not there. Yeah, it was like a behind closed door really handshake, crazy. private fucking boys club. Yeah. We decided. To do that. I mean, I think it's wild when you think that <laughs> you people assume that that's part of the government. Uh, no, that's a private club. It's like Federal it's Express. Fe yeah, exactly. <laughs> Federal 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 State, thank you. Yes, exactly. No, I know, but yeah. people don't really understand that Federal Reserve is not the government, no, dude. That's no. like one. Of, think about this. That's like us having control of everybody's money. Yeah. The fucking four of us. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Deal. Yeah. <laughs> making the deal. You're going to borrow from us. We're going to print it. Yeah. And then, but we all just fall in line with like, oh, our government says this is where it's worth and what we're doing and how we're printing and whatever. It's like, uh, the, like man. meanwhile, it's like anything and everything that's attached to us and what we have going on I mean, is, is just lining our pockets. Bunch of masterminds, though. You know? Did I you see, uh, who was it that just, what, what big. Man, I, I want to uh, maybe maybe fact check me on this. I forget which big uh, investment firm just dumped one of the CEOs of one of the biggest investment firms just dumped a hundred million of his own money into uh, Bitcoin. Well, oh, BlackRock. Uh, yes, I think it was a BlackRock. Yeah, Black Rock. I think it was a BlackRock uh, yeah. CEO. <coughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, look, look, look up. Yeah, like a hundred million of his. his wow. Is it up right now? <laughs> oh, well, I mean, you <laughs> see, gotta be right. You see that, and that makes me get a little nervous. Yeah. Of like, what do these guys oh, know? That Peter we don't? Thiel. Oh, it was Peter Thiel? Yeah. He did 100 million? Yes. Well, wow. I think this was somebody else too, actually. Didn't you? I thought BlackRock also bought a shit there's, ton of Bitcoin. I, I shared that one with you too. There's, wow. there's, yeah, I feel like there's uh did I, ever, did I ever tell you guys about the party that hmm. Doug and I left early because it started getting weird? We're talking about the Hollywood and whatever parties. I'm yeah. not going to say too much, but we were in <coughs> Southern California and we were in this, we got invited to this like party. It's part of this like, it was like internet marketing stuff going on. Hmm. And we're in there, we're hanging out and then people started showing up and the party started to get weird, bro. Like, like Diddy weird. Well, like drug, like, like people started doing cooking? drugs. People started showing up. They were dressed kind of weird. And Doug and I looked at each other like, we should probably leave. 
because this is getting kind of wild. Doug's like, now let's just check this out yeah, a little bit. Yeah, let's yeah, let's true check story. this out for a true little bit. True story, bro. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's Doug's true. like, wait, hold on. Let's just wait a little that's bit longer. Right, let's right, see right. what happens. It's getting a little <laughs> interesting. Doug's like, we should probably stay right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're a big guy. I feel safe right yeah, now. No, no, Doug. I don't like what's going on here. That's a true story. I wasn't going to say that part, but that's true. I just I know all of us too well. Yeah, no. I've got the biggest guy in the room right now. No, no. I'm okay. I can we'll wait this out. We'll be fine. I can wait this out a little bit just longer. See how this plays out. Yeah. No, 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 no. We had to get the hell out of there. <laughs> you remember that party, Doug? I do remember it. Uh, uh, that was okay. What? That's that's pre maps, pre mind pump. Yeah. So this that is, was right at the time of 2013. Yeah. 2013. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Once the hard drugs, the hard drugs started getting come out, and you start people, and then you start seeing, seeing people showing up, and I'm, I could see the people that were coming in. And I was like. Uh, now, was that the first time you, so you've been at a party where you've seen something like that? I, I remember the first I've time. I've seen stuff like that before. Not a big deal. But we, you got I got the vibe of the party was like, this is going to get like, if I don't leave, then I'm going to see a lot of stuff I don't want to see. Yeah, yeah. You know, potentially be a part of. So when I was, uh, and I won't share the person's name, but it's a mutual friend of ours that we knew is back to a party. I rolled I up. I already know who you're talking about. And, and it was in Vegas. And I'm 20, yeah. what am I 23 or 24? Somewhere around that range. And, uh, you know, of course I've seen drugs and I've been around stuff like that in parties, but not to this level. I show up and as I, as I come in, I open the room and the room, it's like a cloud of smoke as soon as I, I come in and there's a giant glass table bigger than this table right here. And there's like 12 dudes around and it's, there's piles of like <laughs> different drugs. Some I knew what they were. Some I didn't, oh I'd gosh. never seen and just oh everybody God. like taking turns partaking in all of it. And, and, and that was like the first five minutes that I was there. I was I'll like, like ah! Oh shit. Nobody this, died. Yeah, I'm not ready for this weekend. You know oh, what I'm saying? I wasn't oh. ready for something like that. That was the first time. And the security guy came up not long after that. Now, obviously in Vegas, that's obviously normal because the security guard was like basically just getting onto them about the smoke. If it wasn't for the smoke, all the other drugs are okay. It's like <laughs> we have neighbors complaining of the the, the, wow. the flume of smoke that's come out into the, the hallway. So you guys need to knock wow. it off. But uh that was the first time that I'd ever been around that much stuff all all in one time. And yeah. boy, it was that comfortable. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah no that's a that's a when you're not i don't know when you're not when you're not i don't think you're that into that stuff like that was like a really weird like uh what do i do here I'll pretend like i'm doing something you know what i'm saying like i'm throwing it over my Go shoulder bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you got any miller light <laughs> you'd be that guy all awkward <laughs> anybody got chewing gum, yeah, yeah. Oh, chewing gum. God, dude, Crazy. That, was, that was also the first time that i'd ever seen uh a dude uh with his french tip painted toenails Mm. And that was what started it for me. Uh, yeah. So I was, before, before it became something else. That's yeah, like when it was like, yeah, yeah, girls. yeah, yeah. It was on like, now it's like this oh yeah. Girl. Then every, everybody ended up doing it later. And then it got weird and everything like that, which is why I haven't done it in a long time. But uh, that was something that I was like, I, and I remember like, what is going on here? He's like, yeah, no, I take care of my feet, bro. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, uh, yeah, that's like really take care of me. He's like, no, chicks love it. And I'm like, really? Yeah. And swear to God, we walk down to the pool, like 13 dudes, right? And there's 13 dudes. These guys are all like fit, money, like Jack. They all got their shit together and stuff like that. And this dude of, of them, okay, like was average or bottom average of the guys, okay, that, that were there in that group. And we walk past the pool and there's like a little group of like, you know, four or five girls drinking in the pool and they see his feet as well and they scream, ah! They go over and they grab him, pull him in the pool, hang him all over. Oh my God, I love it. And then I was like, what? Yeah. <laughs> like this that? Hey, how times have changed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now you see something like that. You're like, mm. yeah. Mm. Okay. <laughs> you're not trying to get chicks. You're trying yeah, to become a chick. Yeah, yeah. Second. Yeah. No, and then it became popular in the UFC. Like it became a fighter thing. So all the fighters used to point their their, their toenails and stuff black, like that. right? Yeah, all different colors. Yeah. Black, blue. I've seen everything. But I, that was like on the, the, the cutting edge of that being Weird. edgy and different. Weird. It was a great conversation starter. It was Weird. a great conversation conversation started for me for a good 10, 15 hey, minutes. Hey, I, I need to ask. So I was supposed, I'm supposed to bring up joy mode today, but I wanted to ask you guys, have you guys used it as a pre-workout yet? Cause that. Yes. Yeah, since you've told me that what do you I think? like to use it when, for example, if like a day like this, where I've had what I would consider my limit of caffeine and I don't want to take any more caffeine in. And then I want to have some sort of like an up feeling or mm -hmm. pump better pump. It's in my the workout. best. It's the best. I mean, of course it's, it's great for, for pumps because it's made for sexual performance, but for workouts, it's the best pre-workout pump you know, encouraging supplement I've used, period. End of story. Is it, okay, so, because I know the, the red juice can have that effect too because of the beet in it, the, the beet juice in yeah. it. Is it, what is it in the joy mode that is different than what's in the red it, juice well, it's that got, causes it, it? It's got a really good extract of ginseng, but there's also the uh, nitrites, I think they're pronounced. Uh, it, maybe you looked that up for me, Doug, if I got that right, that have been shown in studies to boost nitric oxide more than anything else 
you could take naturally. Even more than red juice or even more than beet juice because <clears throat> yes. beet juice is the the most effective that's natural in, way. That's the compound that's in uh, um, uh, beet juice that can yeah. do that. Ah, so it's an extraction from yep. so and it's okay, like so strong. similar. Yeah, similar, and it's very strong. It's, uh, so it's probably a higher dose. dose. Higher dose. Yeah. Uh, Doug, look it up. Make sure I pronounce it right, so I don't I, I don't mess up. Uh, it, 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 uh, I I get a similar. So I would compare the two. I know this is not like a commercial for Organifi's Red Juice, but I find Organifi's Red Juice and Joy Mode are two of my favorite things to take as a pre workout if I don't want caffeine. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I don't want caffeine, but I want kind of this uplifted mood and a good pump in my workout. Either Joy Mode or Red Juice, I have found. Have, have you combined them, or is that too much? I not no, you can take you can take them both. I wonder what it would be like yeah. if I combined. What'd them. you find with the ingredients there, Doug? Yeah, I got vitamin C, arginine, nitrate. That's it. L citrulline. It's and arginine nitrate, so it's a form of arginine that oh, really a, boosts. So uh, why did if it has the L, is it is L citrulline? Is that not the tingly? No, you're thinking of uh, what is that? What's uh, the team? Niacin. niacin. Right? niacin. Yeah. No, 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 no. Niacin's the oh, hot. Oh, no, hot sorry. Red. Um, what's the other oh. one? God, why can't I think of it right now? The tingly. Beta alanine. Oh, you. okay. Was, was, That's I, the one that makes your face weird. Okay, yeah. I don't like that at all. It doesn't do it to me. You know that? Oh, man. I can take a big old dose of it. Man, I take some of that or like, it's so strong. It's like it'll No, it'll, yeah, it'll ruin my workout. It, it makes me, I have to constantly be doing this on my face because it, it does feel like spiders <laughs> are crawling on my face. Everywhere. <laughs> People love that because they're like, oh, I feel it. Yeah, no, no. yeah, it feels really weird, bro. Uh, do you remember that cream? They used to sell this cream that would, it's, it's like to help you with a pump and you would rub it on yes, your skin. Yes. And so all it stupid. did was made your skin hella red. Yeah. <laughs> it would make your skin really red. I'm like, what a terrible product. Like I'd rub it on my biceps to work them out. And like, when we first started the, the podcast, fuck? it had resurfaced again. It was it was like, there was a little moment. It had its, it's had its 15 minutes yeah. fame again. It's like niacin cream or something. It would make your skin red. I'm like, why is anybody think this is good? So Not dumb. good. <clears throat> well, we should do a shout out for our newsletter, which is awesome. We redid it. It's very entertaining. It's different than the podcast. It's different than the other content. It, it's really entertaining. You can get it and it's free. It's the mindpumpmedia.com forward slash newsletter. And you get it. How often do we put it out? Dude, it's every other week. That's and right. Darren it's always is fire. Dude, Darren is just, he's puts out heat, dude. Yeah. I love, he's <laughs> such a talented he's writer. Super witty. And you know, we don't really talk about it that much and push it that much. But uh, Katrina, I was asked, I actually just asked this the other day, which is why it was in the notes to bring it up uh, as a mention. And I asked her, hey, how's the growth been on the newsletter? And she's like, oh, no, it's it's growing. And she goes, every week, she goes, I get emails. I don't tell you guys because it's only like she's like three or four emails. But she gets three or four emails every week of someone going like, oh, my God, I love the newsletter. It's so great. And we've continued to try and add value things with like recipes and things. So that there's value to it. And it's really like comical. And it's like current events with fitness and some of that. So it's I think he's done a really good job of bolstering that. And we're continuing to evolve it and make it better. So if you're not already signed up to the Mind Pump newsletter. You got to do that. Get Dynasty's mission is to give every single American a living trust. Check this out. On their website, getdynasty.com, you can get a trust for free. It takes you less than five minutes. You have a trust for your family and it costs you nothing. You don't have to spend hundreds or thousands of dollars going to a lawyer. This is revolutionizing the industry. Go to getdynasty.com, get yourself a trust, protect your family. It costs you nothing and it takes less than five minutes. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Danny from Texas. What's up, Danny? How are you doing, What's up, man? How can we help you? What's up, guys? How y'all doing? Good. Um, Got to start off with the obvious and say thank you so much for having me on today. Um, I really appreciate you guys taking some time. And of course, you know, all the excellent timeless info you guys put out is invaluable to me and I'm sure plenty of others. Um, so I'll just jump right into it. Um, I'll give a little bit of background. I come from a pretty athletic family, pretty athletic background. Um, my mom played for the U.S. women's national soccer team for a while. My dad was a pretty high-level amateur racquetball player. Um, and so I grew up playing sports a ton, um, water polo, baseball. I've always been into action sports too. Um, I'm a big time, like big mountain backcountry snowboarder. Um, and so these days, my competitive team sports uh, days are pretty much over. I'm not doing a lot of like high-level team sports anymore. Um, but I'm still very into that, like backcountry skiing in the winter, um, big mountain snowboarding. And over the last like five years or so, I've kind of gotten into some endurance training, which I do with friends. So like over the summer, I'll train for some sort of endurance event. Um, I've done a couple of marathons a couple of years ago. I did an ultra marathon last year. I, uh, climbed up half dome and this year I'm training for my first half Ironman. So all this to say, I have kept up my athleticism. Um, but I, pretty much don't have uh, much of an off season. And so since my 
uh, through my college years and since my team sports training has kind of ended, I've been consistently lifting. I've been in the gym. I've probably consistently lifted for about eight years now. So I'd consider myself like late intermediate to, to potentially advanced lifter. Um, but at around the turn of this year, when I signed up for this 70.3 uh, half Ironman, I kind of realized that I basically took traditional strength training and like hypertrophy training and just mashed it together with athletic training um, and like endurance training. And I thought, you know, this may be a little too much. Um, I am almost 27 and you guys might laugh at me for this, but I'm kind of at the age where I'm thinking, okay, I don't quite recover the same as I did when I was 22. So um, at the turn of this year, I decided, I, I don't know if it's really doing me much good to just train like, you know, Vince Geronda all day and also try to pull off all these endurance and like high level athletic things that I like to do as a hobbyist as well. Um, so that led me to pick up maps performance advanced. Um, and I was browsing through the program. I haven't actually, you know, dived into it too deeply yet. Um, but I guess my question is summarized kind of like this, um, between like all the cycling and all the running I do and all the like mountaineering stuff that I do, uh, in the summertime. And then all of the skiing and like hiking around I do in the back country in the, um, winter. Again, I don't have much of an off season and that ends up being a lot of like high intensity, high volume stuff on the lower body specifically. And I guess my question is, is basically how, if at all, would you take something like maps performance advance and maybe like alter the volume or split it up into sort of a maps 15 style that is maybe like less volume and intensity condensed into one session and maybe like disperse that uh, kind of throughout a week so that it's less, um, I'm not like nuking any particular part of my body and I can kind of concurrently train throughout the whole year using something um, like an athleticism based split like maps performances. Um, Cause I know there's, I know you guys say like for most people, most of the time, full body one to three times a week tends to be best. But at what point I guess does your hobbyist athletic pursuits kind of remove you from that most people, most of the time kind of subset of, of trainers. It's so interesting that you're asking this question because one of the things off air we were talking about, you know, we we're always discussing what programs that we're going to do next. And there's been so much demand uh, for like maps 15 style uh, program for like other programs, but really doesn't only, it only really makes sense for one other style in our opinion. And that's what you're asking right now, which is like a more performance based, but like the micro type workouts. And that would be my recommendation is to build uh, a MAPS 15-esque program that is taking from MAPS performance. So you have a rotational component, you have unilateral type work, uh, because from it sounds like you you got a lot going on all year. And by the way, this is the age, right? So 27 was uh, torn ACL for me, 28 was the level three sprains on each ankle, then 29 was the Achilles. And so I literally was, that was right when I was like figuring this out, only I did it the hard way. So the fact that you're calling in and we're discussing this is you're, you're better than I was. Yeah. I think too, like, it, so I'm, I guess I'm trying to wrap my head around like your desired structure with this because with MAPS performance, uh, advanced there's we reduced the volume significantly in terms of the weight training we increased the volume in terms of the skill acquisition so uh in terms of like what athletic pursuits you're trying to pursue or you know reducing that down to those skills of like rotational strength or power or <clears throat> speed or something like a little bit more specified uh, where do you feel, I guess, your emphasis is in terms of like improving your athleticism? Or are you just trying to maintain? Yeah, or is this just like trying to smash all your or no, just hobbies like, in Just there? not get hurt, right? Are you at the point where your life where you're like, I'm not trying to become a better snowboarder or better. I just want to be healthy and be good at like what's kind of the desired outcome? Um, yeah, so it's I, th I appreciate both your questions there. Those are both valid. Um, I'm, I'm constantly trying to improve a little bit. I mean, snowboarding is kind of my main thing. I do these endurance events for fun. So I'm, I'm, I'm always trying to get a little better, throw some more advanced tricks off of jumps and stuff like that and dropping cliffs and doing, you know, a little more technical stuff in the back country. Um, so I'm always trying to get better there, but by the same token, I want my training to, you know, um, enhance my abilities in other things and, you know, kind of just keep my health up prevent injury kind of like you said adam and, and 
Justin, I did notice, it's funny, I actually wrote in this question right before um, I picked up Performance Advanced. So mm. through browsing through Performance Advanced, I do notice that the volume is greatly reduced from like a strength perspective. Um, and I do think that like, you know, total body strength, big, big compound movement strength is a central tenet of athleticism, but so are these rotational components and like mastery over your body weight and things like that. Um, so I definitely think, um, however I can apply something like maps performance to make myself better, um, is going to be much appreciated of course, but, but I definitely, um, don't need to go, you know, pump up my deadlift super high or, or get, um, you know, I'm not, and with these endurance events that I do in the summer, I'm not out there trying to set any PRs or like go to nationals wow. for the Ironman or anything like that. Um, but it, it's, it's more just like continuous improvement and using the training to, uh, stay healthy and, and become incrementally more athletic, I will say, wow. not necessarily, you know, make big strides over an eight to 12 to 16 week period, if that makes sense. Well, I mean, the structure's there, I guess, is uh, okay. what, what I'm trying yeah. to get at. Uh, if, if you're willing to, to sort of go through it as it's laid out, um, and you know, where you find opportunities to practice sports specific skill within those days of selecting, like if you're doing rotation or you can actually do two skills, which I recommend, I, I usually alternate them on those days just so I could put a little more emphasis on that specifically and do the drills, you know, associated with that. Um, but in terms of like, uh, I think the, the the 15 style type of, of training, like doing that continuously actually works really well in season. And so this is something too, that I know um, Corey Schlesinger kind of brought it up as it was, makes perfect sense to me is that we don't really put that kind of attention on maintaining strength throughout the season. And that would be the, the best right. dose, uh, you know, to apply before practicing uh, and doing all the drilling uh, for your endurance events or, or whatever it is with that. Uh, but yeah, in terms of like having an actual off season is, is the most ideal situation to view that program as your off season training. And so you're building up and developing these skills and putting attention to them so you can actually improve. Otherwise, uh, you know, we get a little distracted by all these variables that then, you know, we have to account for. D Danny, how many days a yeah, week, are, yeah. how many days a week are you uh, training yourself that is not strength training? Like what is your what does your week look like? Yeah, so um, I actually just started this kind of seventy point three half Ironman training block, and so that involves me doing, you know, pretty much low intensity zone two type of stuff. Whether it's a swim, bike, or run, uh, four to five days a week, and then a more intense like interval run, interval swim, interval bike twice a week. Wow. Um, so that's for right now. So, you know, that's already six, seven days right there. And then in the winter, I'm, I'm usually skiing anywhere from three to five days a week. Um, so it's, it's a lot, I mean, you know, um, it's, it's a okay. lot of stuff. So, and, so here's the deal. So, cause the two, the two things you need to consider most for what you're doing is, um, one, uh, is your body able to handle all of that stress or are you just, are you hitting your absolute max tolerance? Cause what will happen if, if you're hitting that limit to con is you'll start to hurt yourself. Yeah. Injury is going to start to, to creep up. So you need to have an off-season. Your winter skiing might be viewed as off-season. If you did like three days a week of skiing, one day a week of strength training, so three days a week you don't work out, you know, you could do regular activity. I think that would be a good idea. During Ironman training, I mean, you're not going to get away with mo more than one strength training exercise a day or one one day of strength training where you're doing maybe four or five exercises. I don't think you're going to get away with any more than that. Did, Danny, did you listen to the episode? Yeah. We did, did you listen to the episode we did with Corey Schlesinger? Uh, no. So I, I haven't listened to that. Oh, one you'll like, yeah, you'll like that. Even though it's, we're talking. Okay. He, so he was the, at this yeah. time he's, he's now moved on to Texas, but he was with, um, uh, the, the sons, sons, Phoenix sons, Phoenix sons as their strength and, and oh, conditioning sweet. coach. And he talked about, uh, these micro workouts in season when they're playing basketball that he does. And so it, 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 even though it's not, it's, it's basketball, it still applies to what you're doing. It's a high intensity type of, 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 of sport. Right. And so how do you integrate still strength training in there? And you'll see, he does these micro workouts. So listen to that episode. You'll enjoy that. Because this is, there is, I mean, this is like where if you were a client, this would be best because then I'd want to be community. Like, it, how, how are you feeling every week? I want to hear. It would you. look like this. It would be like, uh, today I'm going to do my swim. Before I do my swim, I'm going to do three sets 
of this strength training exercise. Yeah. That's it. Squats. Tomorrow I'm you know running. I'm going to do three sets of this other strength training exercise. That's it. And you would do that like four or five days a week. You could take MAPS Performance Advance, Advance yeah. and break take the these. workout and just go through the exercises in order but spread them out throughout the week. I wouldn't do more than four or five days a week. I, you could do mobility every day if you want. But you're... You're already training at such, and you said like you know, for most of the people, most of the time when it came to full body, you're not most of the people. Uh, you're very, very. You're in a small category of people that's training a lot. I've trained Ironman competitors, and the amount of volume and training required Your stress tolerance is very high. It's so. it's just a lot, and so adding more strength training on top of that almost always results in injury. So it's not going to bring you any value unless you're really careful with how you apply it. The other piece I was going to say is your sleep. I don't know how good and consistent you are with your sleep, but nothing will get your body to hurt itself faster than not having very good sleep every single night. So that's, and that's the, the data shows that very clearly. So that'd be the other thing I would yeah, pay attention um, to. Sure. I, I, I tend to do, I'm, I'm generally good for like seven to nine hours. I, I, I hit my sleep pretty well. Um, but I, I, I'm glad I'm hearing this from you guys, this idea of like one exercise you know, a day and call it, it that um, it. or just like one day a week. Cause I'm, I'm a, I mentioned this in my question, but I'm also a like full time, I'm finishing up a PhD in materials engineering and like <laughs> yeah. run a couple oh real God. estate investing <laughs> companies. So I got a lot on my plate and I'm definitely like, you sound lazy, bro. You sound grown. lazy. You just get, <laughs> <laughs> I know, honestly, I, I got to get my shit together, um, but I'm definitely, I meet your criteria for these people that are likely yes. to overtrain. Yes. So yeah, yeah. if I'm thinking about the long game and like trying to figure out how I can continue to do all yeah. this stuff, you know, into my 80s 90s 100 you know well, even who, for who performance um, I, I think it's worth yeah you'll respond so much better if you if you reduce it down yeah take, based take, on what you've taken off season take at least three three months out of the year and don't do any of this stuff and i would just do strength training just you got to do that once okay. a year you're going to start to run into some yeah. big problems because yeah. you have two options here either you voluntarily take an off season or yeah. you're going to be forced so or you get forced to take right? Yeah, and yeah. so um, and again, again the, the injury risk is super high when you're overtrained and or underslept. Those two things really like your your risk of injury is like through the roof. So yeah. I would take an off season every year, yeah. and I would do just traditional strength training, eating a surplus, let your body kind of heal, and then when you're in season, one exercise a day is what I would do, and I would do it at moderate intensity at most, yeah, yeah. not high intensity either. In fact, you could have a pair of dumbbells or a barbell there at your place. And you would just wake up and do, you know, three sets of an exercise and that's it. Nothing else. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, and especially as the weather gets warmer, um, I, I love taking like, you know, the kettlebells outside and like go to the park with a pull-up bar yeah. and just crank out a few like low intensity, love um, yep. you know, kettlebell body weight movements. I, I love that kind of thing. So that's it. All right. That's, that's Andrew, Andrew, very, Doug, very did you guys get the episode guys. number? You guys get, what's the episode number for him? Uh, 1927. 1927. That's what episode. Listen, listen to that. You'll enjoy it. Doug was yeah, born. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, sorry. All right, Dan. All right, hey, good luck, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, guys. All right, Thanks, y'all. Appreciate it. Yep. Yeah. You got it. This is super high achiever. What a badass. Dude. I know. Oh, what a, what a badass. Taking on everything at once. Yeah. I had... Um, I, it looks... He, I mean, he looked healthy. He did... Like, he did, Like I thought... Someone like that, you would think would be like... Just. Well, he's been working out for a long time. He's got athletic background. His parents are athletes. So... He's but that doesn't mean yeah. he's not... You know, he's, no, he's no. doing his best. No. And, and, and overtraining is the name of the game when it yeah. comes to those sports. Like, almost everybody struggles I'm with so it. glad we caught him now totally. before he's 30 and he makes the mistake that I made. You know, yeah. I think that's what happens is you think you think because you can tolerate and get away with it, but eventually... Yeah, it's not beneficial. You're tolerating, but it's not moving you forward. Father time is undefeated. No, and when I trained uh, my triathletes and Ironman competitors, I, I'll, I'll never forget, there was a period there where I had quite a few of them. I had like four clients that were like high level. And I remember scaling back, nope, too much. Scaling back, nope, too much. <laughs> and I scaled back to such a ridiculous low level of volume. Yeah, you and then it was they started, absurd. and then everybody started improving. Yeah, and I remember being like, okay, I, I, I have to really, really. I, I, I that's thought, the epiphany a lot of these athletes have yes, to get. Totally. Our next caller is Joe from Utah. What's up, Joe? What's up, Joe? Hey guys, appreciate you taking the time. You got it. Mm. How can we help you? Well, I've been trying to lean out for. Uh, probably a couple of years and haven't really been able to master the food side of things. Uh, hit a mental low probably about six months ago when I saw the scale tip uh, 260, which is the heaviest I've ever seen it, um, and decided to hire a coach that had been working with a friend. Um, 
and he referred me to. So I've seen some decent progress, uh, down to 237 and dropped some inches. I've got a better relationship with food, uh, order I eat it in, uh, that kind of thing. I've increased my Z press, improved my squat form. sort of learned how to do a low bar squat. Um, but I just feel like I need a little bit more sustainable approach than eat less and move more, which is sort of what's been pushing, uh, now he's wanting me to do about an hour of cardio and an hour of weights a day. And I just don't necessarily have time for that. I'm down to about 21 to 2,400 calories a day. Uh, we're doing intermittent fasting, uh, which I've, I think I've liked actually, cause of the, the sort of hard and fast rule of when to eat, when to not. Uh, but it is down to like one solid meal at lunch and then a protein shake for dinner, which is hard. Uh, mm. we do about a weekly 24 hour fast. And then my workout re routines, a five day body part split. Um, however, Jesus. I'm just getting over a cold. Uh, so I've only been doing some compound lifts, maybe five, 10, 15 minutes, um, every day for the last couple of weeks. I'd like to lean out some more. Uh, I've got a beach trip in a couple months. Uh, I'd like to get close for that. And I feel like I need a reverse diet, but I'm sort of scared to do that. Um, so yeah, my thoughts are to how to do that. If that's the right thing to do, think to start maybe anabolic after I, now that I'm done with working with the coach, um, just like your thoughts, are what's you, next? Are, so the coach has told you to do all this? Yes. Okay. And you're he, still working with them? No, he got rid of them. No, I just ended. Yeah, good. Oh, you look good though, bro. Yeah. Yeah, you're doing good. You're, you're co you're, as far as how lean you the are. The coach's advice is terrible. Yeah, yeah. That's so here's insane. a typical online fitness coach that sucks. <laughs> is they'll say, oh, you want to lose weight. All right, here's what we're going to do. Cut your calories and we're going to have you move more. And then, oh, you plateaued. We're going to cut your calories more. more. We're going to have you move more. Oh, it's hard for you to, to cut your calories. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to have you fast because that means you don't eat any food or any calories. Yeah, yeah. These, are, these online coaches really annoy the shit out of me because they don't know what they're talking about. So here's the deal. You got two months for whatever. Don't focus on change. Don't try to get in shape for something in 60 days because we got to we got to reverse out of where you're at right now. You're, doing two, you're a big dude yep. doing two hours of activity five or six days a week and you're only eating 21 to 2300 calories you said and then a like day of, and a 24 hour fast once a week no yeah, yeah. yeah. we got to we got to back out of that is what we got to do so what yeah. i would do is i would cut the cardio out to start with keep your calories where they're at and then slowly reverse diet and bring your calories up while strength training and maps anabolic is the good call that would yes. be the maps anabolic would be the program to do now here's the deal um, you could very well get leaner through this process by simply adding muscle. So if you cut your cardio out right now, maintain your I've strength. I've been doing track. that for the last, last two weeks. No, no cardio for the last, last okay. little while. How you been feeling? I'm, I think I'm, I'm a day or two between before I'm a hundred percent. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. Okay, good. So I would do maps anabolic. I wouldn't do any cardio. You could walk, you know, walk, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes after breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, I would hit your, your calories and slowly increase your calories over time, maybe two, 150, 200 calories a week and just get strong. And, you, and, and that, like I said, if you build muscle without gaining body fat, let's say your body weight goes up 10 pounds of lean body mass, which it won't, but let's say it did, maybe it will. You're a big dude, 10 pounds of lean body mass without any additional body fat. You're leaner now because your body fat percentage, remember it's a percentage of to total body weight. So you could very well get leaner through this reverse diet process. I, I actually think there's a huge opportunity here too. Um, I'm assuming if you're fasting that much and you're only eating twice a day and you're a 230 pound dude, you're not getting anywhere near 200 grams of protein. Do you know what your grams of protein no. are? Oh, geez. I've been, I've been, he hasn't been having me track that, but I tracked the last couple of weeks. So I'm getting about 120 to 150. Okay, so and then I have a lot of BCAAs on top of that. Huge, huge opportunity for us then. That's, that's, this is a good thing. That's where you reverse It's a good yeah. thing that he fucked up so bad that we can change <laughs> a few things and we should see some real positive results here, right? So like all Sal's advice. And the main thing that I would have you do is go after your protein intake. Like that's the focus is to okay. really, in fact, I'm less concerned about hitting right around 2,100 to 20. I like, I want you to get your protein intake every day. And if, and if you stop the cardio and you're, you're strength training five days a week right now, is that what you said? Five? Yes. Okay. Five. Cause we're going to go, we're going to bring you down. I might have you walk at least 
two of the day, the other day. Like, so you were going to the gym five days a week. I might have you have a day, those two days that you were still going to the gym, go there and walk and maybe do some mobility stuff, re re recovery type stuff. So mobility work yeah. or trigger sessions and walking on trail. Because we, on the anabolic, you have two days that are trigger sessions. So if you've been in this routine of going to the gym five days a week, two of those days now are going to be just trigger session and walking, maybe yeah. some stretching, some stuff like that. So you have some activity still that'll help uh, mitigate any additional calories that we're probably going to go up in. But protein, hit your protein intake, follow what Sal said. I, I think you're going to see yourself build muscle right now. Yeah, you, you, you'll, you'll get really strong and that's what you want. Get, get really strong. But yeah, so it's the fact that you're not hitting your pro what's your goal body weight? Um probably around 220. I'd like to get around the 10% body fat. Hit 200 range. Hit 220 grams of protein a day. Yeah. There that's that's where your extra calories are going to go. Doug, can we put them in the forum too? I want to keep you in the forum so we keep an eye on you, help yeah. you through this process. I think uh, yeah, I think you got a lot of potential to to turn some stuff Do you around. have um Maps anabolic? I do. I do. I did a Saw some good results probably about maybe four or five years ago with it. Good. On here. So good. Yeah. Follow that. Do the three day version, trigger sessions on the off days walking, cut the cardio out, eat, hit those protein targets, and let's get your let's get your body back up. Yeah. And John, we're gonna put you in the private forum. So uh just keep keep us updated. You know, once once a month, okay. check in with us. Just let us know how how it's going, what you notice, what you feel, what are and then if we need to make any sort of adjustments, we can. But I think simply hitting your protein intake, reducing the amount of tr training you're doing, and back off that cardio, you're gonna you're gonna build some muscle right now. Maybe maybe get your money back from that coach and tell him, <laughs> tell him that if he doesn't give your money back, that we'll we'll display his name uh, up on this podcast when we post it. How about that? He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a good guy. He's yeah, a good guy. Yeah, he got yeah. me where I couldn't. That's right. He, he I, I was in a bad place. So he led you, led you back yeah, to yeah, us, yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. all good. Yeah. Yeah. Stalin, Stalin yeah, did yeah, things. Yeah, did yeah, kill yeah. a lot all of people for good reasons. All roads lead to you. Sal's Sal's in a mood today to yeah, get these people. So all right, it's, all right. Right. <laughs> it's all good. You're here now. We'll fix it. You're it, and you know what? It, it, it wasn't very long, so I, I don't think you did any serious damage or anything like that. No, I, I no, think no. that you'll bounce and back. I, and I think actually bumping your protein and and reducing the volume of training, you're gonna you're gonna respond really nice. Yeah, you'll see a significant yeah, yeah. difference with that. Yep. Awesome. You you talked about uh, strength after anabolic. I was, I was thinking to do old time. Yeah. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I like that. You'll love that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right on. Awesome. Super fun, dude. Thanks, You'll Joe. All right, Joe. We'll Thanks, see you in the, guys. We'll I appreciate see it. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see you in the forum. Those shitty ass Pro. That's. Bro. <laughs> Jesus This Christ. is literally, listen, this is literally what they do. You know what's even worse? Move more. Oh, here's your calories. Cut your calories. Oh, you plateau. Cut your calories more. I move know. more. I know. You're you're not a fitness coach. You're just a person that understands if people move more and eat less, they start to lose weight, and you're hurting people. You're a moron. You might that, be a nice guy, but you're an idiot. I know. That's the thing. It's the majority of these oh, coaches. Oh God! It's, yeah. I, wish, I wish I would so ask. Hard I bet to. you money this was like a guy who competed and got. Of course, in, in sure. God, <laughs> that's the that's the model, man. I tell you, for all the competitors, is they do. And yeah. imagine if he wanted to get on stage, then he'd just keep you going down the. You just keep going. He'd be eating twelve hundred. Bro, he's calories a big dude. Having me <laughs> two <laughs> hours of activity. I mean, he day. looks good though. I mean, he actually's got a, a good base right now. I think once yeah, we, he probably has really good genetics. Yeah, watch. We reverse him and build some muscle. He's gonna look. He's gonna look good. He's had a fine. I, I know you asked him his goal weight. He doesn't need to change his weight at all. I can tell by his structure. Yeah, yeah, he's, he could keep that weight exactly the same build muscle. and build muscle and just slightly lean. And he'll look he'll look great at that exact weight. Yeah. So when you listen to this, Joe, I don't want you to think that uh, the, the scale, scale matters move. anything Body right now. Recomp. Yeah, just go off of looking at your picture every two weeks. And I promise if taking that advice every two weeks, you'll be happy with what you're seeing. Our next caller is Ben from Texas. Ben, what's up, man? What's happening? How's it, go How's it going? What's going on, Ben? It's good. Sweet. Thank you guys for having me. Okay. Uh, I'll just jump right into it. Let's hear it. So it. I just became a certified trainer, and I've done a few interviews with some big box gyms. And the one thing that they all have in common is that they kind of want to, like, sell yourself and, uh, like, go out onto the gym floor and – and try to get personal or try to sell personal training packages that way. So my question is, how can I approach members on the gym floor with uh, having like a genuine conversation, but also with the intention to sell them personal training? 
Oh man, this is <laughs> literally straight out of our course. I know. <laughs> we have. Did you know we have a, a course on uh, for trainers, uh, for trainers and coaches that kind of teaches them how to build their business? Okay, that's got, exactly what we built for the for yeah. someone like you who's in, just getting started. In, in the, fact, is our three day training live, Doug? Yeah. I, what's I, the what's the pay, what's the URL? let me get that for you? All right, Ben, I'm going to give you a URL. It's a three day training that we did that's free. Um, and we just okay. put it up and in there we teach and talk about how to sell training. We talk about how to map out your business. We so talk all big packages, yep. all this stuff. Okay. So I'm going to, but I'm going to give you some answers here, um, uh, on this call. Now, number one, it's not just big box gyms that want you to do this or small studios. It is a requirement to be a successful trainer. Yeah. The number one skill that you need to develop if you want to really be effective at getting people good results and getting clients and building your business is you have to learn how to effectively com communicate the value that you can provide, AKA sell training. And you have to get clients to understand and understand how to communicate to, to them while you're training them because the selling doesn't stop there. Just because someone hired you doesn't mean you, you, you stop trying to help them change their behaviors. That's the entire, that's your entire career of personal training. So the skills that you're going to develop by, tr by, by, figuring out how to sell people training off the floor are going to be the same skills that you're going to need to get your client to change their eating habits or change their workouts. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is this, Ben, don't sell personal training off the floor, sell an appointment off the floor. You want to be able to get them to schedule an appointment to come meet you. Now you can sell off the floor Build when you're poor, when you're really good. But I, I think this is like, um, you know, it's like telling somebody you're going to get a boxing match, go for the knockout right away before you learn how to jab and all that stuff. So I would teach my trainers, like, you're not out there to sell personal training. What you're trying to do is see if they'll want to come back and do a workout with you and work on something that they want to work on. So that's the first thing. The second thing is it's okay. hard on the workout floor. It's easy at the front desk. The front desk is where you're going to meet people and talk to them because they're already walking in. You're checking them in. You can greet them. And that's a natural opening for conversation. On the workout floor, it kind of feels awkward. You're interrupting the workout. Maybe they have headphones on, whatever. You could still do it, but the, the front desk is the place to do it. So at the front desk, when you check people in, you scan their card or whatever. Make sure you say their name. John, have a great workout. Or what are you working on today? Oh, I'm hitting back. Awesome. You want to come, you want, next time you come in, let me take you through a workout to train your whatever. Or when next time you come in, let's schedule a session. I'm going to take you through a free training session, whatever. You can get a lot of no's, but you'll get some yeses. But that initial ice-breaking conversation, way easier at the front desk. In the course, uh, I go over an exercise um, that to teach trainers in, this, in your position to learn how to rapport build. And so what I used to do with my staff is they, I'd get it like a little journal for all of them. And then your goal would be to walk that floor and go learn one to two things about as many people as you could. And I'd have you go out and you go you go walk up to the lady that's on the Stairmaster, introduce yourself, uh, who you are, ask her how her day is going, if there's anything that you could help her with, how long she's been a member. Get a few, get as much information as you can in a short period of time introducing yourself. Come back, write down one or two facts about them. Oh, Susie comes in the gym Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Fridays and plays tennis. That's it. And then go to the next person. And then you just keep building this up. And then as you saw those people come in a second and a third time, you then approach them by their name. Hey, Susie, how you doing? How was tennis last week? How's the back and, swing? Yeah. And you start you start building rapport and adding to that. Once you learn to do that, it, it, it makes it way more comfortable because you've now talked to Susie three times in the gym. You know that she has two kids. She plays tennis. And you can bring up something like, or maybe she does in that third conversation that, oh man, my, my knee, I hurt my knee the other day playing tennis. Oh, great opportunity for you to be able to show her some things that she could do to rehab that. Oh, that might be related to ankle or hip mobility. If you have some time next Tuesday, I'd love to set an appointment with you where we can go over a few extras. Like, totally free. It'd be on my time if that's okay with you. Oh my God, that's so awesome, Ben. You would do that? Absolutely. Let's schedule that appointment. Like that's what it looks like. And you should, and it's like literally just a numbers game. You're you're just building relationships with these people and you're you're learning about them. You're finding opportunities where you as a coach and trainer could help this person out. You're offering your services for an hour for free to give them some insight on your abilities and what you can do as a coach. And then in that hour, like Sal is saying, that's your opportunity to close. Because then I know next Tuesday, I got Susie and Susie's got, you know, a knee injury that she just had. I know what her goals are. I know a little bit about her. And so now I'm brainstorming of like, what am I going to help her with? What am I teaching her? But th all this stuff, Ben, 
This is the stuff we go deep in yeah. in the course. This is what it was all about, was to help, because this is what we thought every, and by the way, we're partners with NASM. NASM is one of the best national certifications that are out there. But one of the things that a lot of certifications didn't do was fill these gaps. They don't tell you on day one, you're going to have your, your boss. And it's is the tell lifeblood you. of your business. Yeah. It's like <laughs> literally like how you're going to be successful. It's like yeah. you, you could have all the national search in the world, but if you don't know how to fucking approach somebody in the gym and convert them into a sale, you're not going to be successful. So that was the, the vision of building this course was to fill all the gaps that we thought national certifications were not doing. And so that's a must, brother. Yeah. At the end of the day, I mean, it's like Salary says, it's the, it's effective communication and that's really what sales is. And so it really, it's just like, you're constantly just effectively, you know, forecasting a vision for them. If they're interested, really, you have to get their attention, get them interested and, you know, build that rapport first. That's, that's step number one. By the one. way, rapport building, it could be also as simple as, as this, like, you know, and I, I see this in the gym I work out in. Um, you, the really good staff members that are good at this will walk the floor and they'll fist pump somebody between sets. Yeah. You see someone put, Hey man, good job. Mm -hmm. Boom. Yeah. You do that two or three times. By the time you get to the third time, you know, the third time they work out and you see them, Hey, how's your workout going? Now you can start talking to them. You know what Adam's talking about, uh, doesn't take long at all. Within a week or two, you'll start to know people within the shifts that you work and you'll become the mayor. I used to tell my trainers, you are the mayor of this gym. I want you to act like you're the mayor, walk around and talk with people. And then, you know, you talk to someone two or three times. Now it's easy to, to approach them, talk to them about working with you and taking them through a workout. When I was 20 years old, I was known as the trainer inside our facility, like the best trainer. And I was the least educated, the least experienced, and the youngest. It wasn't because I was the best trainer. It was because I he did was all those. He was I, the most <laughs> handsome. <though. laughs> it was because I did all that stuff. I really, I saw that opportunity that all these trainers, they just focused on their one client who was paying them and they didn't pay attention to the sea of people that were walking around. And I just went out there and I talked to everybody and was friendly and helped people out. And then before long, I became the trainer in that facility, even though I didn't have the experience and yep. the education yet. That is massive part of being successful inside of a gym. You become that guy, and I guarantee the stuff will start to fall into place. Totally. Okay. Um, if I see somebody kind of doing an exercise that maybe they don't have like the correct form, should I approach them or do you think that would kind of be like insulting them? You can approach them, but, but the way you do it is you don't go, hey, yeah. you're doing that wrong. Yeah. You would say, hey, you mind if I show you a different way to do that? But, or, or Ben. It's all on how you present it. Okay, so even better. Okay, what did I tell you the exercise was? Go over and meet that person. If I see someone with bad form, the way I look at that, that's an opportunity for someone who needs coaching. I don't need to address it right out the gates, but that's a person I want to go talk to. Yeah. So if I look at the floor and there's 20 people and then there's a, a lady doing lap pull down, terrible. She's going to be the one, first one I go walk and say hi to. Yeah. So you don't have to say anything about her form the first time, but you introduce her. Hey, what's your name? My name's Ben. I'm one of the trainers here. I'm here to help out if you ever have any questions. And just introduce yourself. Yeah. But what you know is that you already see an opportunity of something you can teach her and help her with. You don't need to lead with that, but that should be the first person you go yeah. after and go say hi to. So go say hi to her and introduce yourself. Now, what happens sometimes when you approach it that way, she goes, yeah, I just, I was trying to work my arms. You go, oh, this is actually for your lats. Would you like me to show you how to do it correctly? She opens it up and invites you to do that. Yeah. Then you can do, then you could coach her. But initially, all you want to do is introduce yourself. Just go mm -hmm. go meet her and talk to her or him and then let and let, let it unfold. Don't go, the worst thing a trainer does, go like, yeah. hey, you're doing that wrong. You want me to show you how to do yeah. it right? Yeah. Like, very, very few yeah. trainers can get away. Very with few that. people will receive that, right? Most people, especially men, yeah. are going to get pissed off when you do that. Instead, you see they're doing something wrong. I'm like, oh, that's a good lead. That's a good lead because I know I can help her do that lap pull down right. So I'm going to go over and at least introduce myself, find out a little bit of information about her. Hopefully, it leads to me helping her right away. But the bare minimum, I know who she is, and I know she doesn't do a lap pull down well, and I'm going to fix it sooner go, or later. Go take our course right now, our free three-day course. It's mindpumptrainercourse.com. Go take that. Watch it. You'll learn a lot from that. No good. Oh, well, can I ask one more question? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, We're sending you a bill. Do you guys have any good... <laughs> <laughs> just kidding bro do you guys have any good books uh to read about selling or maybe like closing deals nothing's gonna be better than the course that yeah, we have yeah, yeah, yeah i think yeah. it's very specific okay. to personal training the, yeah. that three Save the, your money for that the free three-day training is deep on sales that's like what most of it is if so watch, watch that and it's free okay. so take advantage of that okay sounds good all, all right, right man. Guys. all right brother good luck have a good one yep the only trainers I've ever seen that 
had success with going up to people and saying, you're doing that wrong, <laughs> were the most visibly jacked. Yeah. Like, there were always these, like, it was hard to argue like with them. Intimidating, yeah. Because they're the yeah, biggest, yeah. buffest, strongest people in the gym. And so you're like, okay, Even then, you, you, yeah, you, you're just like operating out of fear yeah yeah, yeah. Like, it's like well, well you're the biggest guy well what it is it. is they go like oh he must he knows he must know something i don't that's know it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. yeah, that's yeah. all i've that. only had a couple trainers get away with that yeah, those yeah, trainers yeah, yeah. don't you can't do that no the key the key is to re the rapport build you just go yep. build rapport and and it's funny because i tell you what this is uh this is a problem in most gyms trainers okay we're we're terrible sometimes we get so focused on the people that are paying us, and then we don't pay attention to the hundreds of leads. So I used to always tell trainers, man, you think it's harder because you're brand new. There's a sea of opportunity oh, that all all my veteran all trainers green grass. Yeah, they're all busy and they're they're helping their one the person who's paying them. They're not interested in hustling and working hard. Go in there and just become the person who is helping That's everybody. It. And you'll be surprised on how much you'll get just from that alone. Our next caller is Heidi from Missouri. Heidi. Hey, how can we help What's you? Happening? Hi, this is so crazy. I've been listening since 2019. So wow, this is really crazy. Awesome. <laughs> All right. So nice to meet you guys. Thank you. you. Same. Um, so I'm just going to jump in my question. Yes. So I'll just jump in my question. Um, I'm married. I'm 22 years old. And I just found out that I'm pregnant last weekend. Oh. I was on the second week of phase three of anabolic when I found out what is the best workout program during the rest of pregnancy? I'm currently six weeks along. Congratulations, yes. by the way. Congrats. So, okay. So Thank you. first off, what, what kind of working out and training were you doing before you got pregnant? You're, you're not new to fitness, right? You've been working out for a while? Right. So I've been working out since like 2018. Okay. So this is, this so is, this I, is key. This is key because, uh, the, the mistake women typically make is they get pregnant and they start a new yeah, workout then it's a routine. Hustle all of a sudden. And then it's a hustle. But you're in a great position, uh, mainly because you've been working out this whole time. You can just continue the process. Yeah. There's really nothing you can't do yeah. so long as you listen to your body. So here's what's going to happen. Now, you're week six. How are you feeling right now, by the way? Any morning sickness, nausea, any of that stuff? No, I feel perfectly normal. That's how I didn't even know I was even pregnant. I was just, That's awesome. Right, I good, feel perfect. Good so, for you. Yeah. So all you're going to do is listen to your body. So what that means is when you go into an exercise, and this typically occurs in the third trimester, okay? It's usually the third trimester where some exercises need to get modified. Typically, you're going to avoid uh, you know, crunches or sit-ups as the baby grows. It just gets in the way. You might avoid split stance exercises yeah. because... Uh, torquing the pelvis sometimes can cause uh, pelvic synthesis uh, issues or pain. So, but but really, it's up to how you feel. I've had women I've trained who were fit, got pregnant, and we didn't change anything until like the last like two weeks when they just were too tired. Right, it's Katrina literally all the way up to the last couple of weeks of Max being born, and that we were running anabolic, I believe at that time it was either a anabolic or aesthetic. And the advice I gave her was, "Honey, we're we're just not trying to hit PRs or make That's moves it. right now. Like wherever your strength is at right now." Okay. Keep yourself there. Maintain. Like, yeah, maintain that or back off on days when you feel it. So if you have a, a night you didn't get good rest or you're just feeling, you're not feeling your normal self, back off the intensity, but don't try and push anything right now. That's all I would tell her. It's like, you've already been training consistently. Okay. Yep. You're set perfect right now. And like, just you staying consistent with the workout you're already currently doing and not trying to increase yeah. weight or increase volume. Like, just, just keep following it. You're going to be okay. Yeah, and again, it's it's it, okay. it's typically the third trimester where some women will need to swap out certain exercises just because, and, and and you'll know this because you'll do the movement, and you'll be like, that doesn't feel yeah, right, you know. I don't comfortable. I don't like the obvious. way that exactly. And then you'll just say, okay, I'm going to switch that out for a different movement, and that's pretty much it. Just listen to your body, but you're in such a good position because you've been working mm -hmm. out for so long before and during. Like the bounce back yeah. is going to be amazing. Amazing. And then, of course, your age, yeah. you're really young, but really the fitness is what makes the biggest difference. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I'm almost done with phase three of anabolic. Would I just go back and anabolic again and just kind of repeat that? Or how many of our what, programs have you followed? Uh, I've done anabolic a few times. I've done aesthetic. Um, I've done 15. I've done quite a few of them. Okay. I mean, you can honestly, so. you could get into almost any of our programs. I wouldn't go with the super high volume program. 
But anabolic okay. would be fine. Performance yeah. would be fine. I don't like performance because performance yeah. is a lot of split. I think just I, anabolic. I like anabolic you, you're or already aesthetic. Familiar, yeah, and you're kind of on pace. Okay, with that, and I know so. aesthetics a lot of volume, but it's all bilateral stuff mostly or machines. Okay. Like I, I like. It. I mean, you could run anabolic just again. for a little bit more control. Yeah, you all. just go right back and anabolic should yeah. be should be totally fine during that time post okay. post pregnancy. Yeah. Then I would look at MAP mm -hmm. starter. Yeah. yeah. So after you have the baby okay. and you're cleared to exercise and you feel good, then what you don't want to do, now here's the challenge. You're going to want to jump right, especially if you feel good, you don't want to jump right back into yeah. what you were doing before. Muscle recruitment patterns have changed, uh, so you're going to want to take your time. Mm -hmm. MAP Starter is a great program postpartum. And don't rush that. This was something I had to communicate to Katrina also because she was in a hurry to get back to MAPS Aesthetic or MAPS Anabolic. And I said, go through Starter. You're going to progress just fine because we had to take those six weeks off. You're going to see results from it. Just trust the process. And so that I just had to keep reminding her that because she was like, yeah. by the second week of starter, she was like, all right, let's get to aesthetic. I'm like, there's no reason to. Your body's yeah. going to see results following starter. I know right. it feels like it's easier than what you're used to. Mm -hmm. Don't worry. You'll get there. And, you know, that was the, the only thing. The intention is to fuel your way through it, really, like reestablish that connection. Uh, with your body because it's you know there's going to be a lot of that that needs to happen to then build that stability and that support system back do you do you have map starter okay um i don't think so okay we'll give you no. we'll give you an early early gift for there the baby yeah, yeah. we'll send that over we'll, to you okay all right <laughs> we call it thank you so much what, thank what, you guys what month yeah. does the baby do when's our when's our mind pump baby do here november oh november, uh, november. baby <laughs> yeah, you're right. yes, yeah. yes what, what day what day november what 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 is it November 14th. Ah, uh, Katrina's the 15th on the 16th. Yes. Look at that. On the 11th. So oh, no right way. Together. Ah, look at that. <laughs> yeah. I'll take it that whole yeah. week. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for everything you do. Um, me and my mom will literally sit down and just talk about all you guys talk about. You, you guys really are good conversation starters. So. <laughs> oh, that's great. I love that's you guys so much. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thanks, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you Scorpios, I swear. So yeah. similar. <laughs> All the same. Oh, man. That's oh, so she said five years she's been listening? She's 2018. She's only 22. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so it's 19, 2019, yeah, right? Like, so she, so five years. So five years she's been listening yeah. to the show. So I mean, but she's been working out the 17 years old. She's been working out this long. I mean, she's she's going to have a great... Yeah, she's gonna be, as long as everything's normal and healthy, yeah. she's going to be fine. It'll be yeah. great. No, that, that, I think the... the the point you made is the biggest key because for some reason everybody decides <laughs> once they get pregnant they're like oh yeah. I want to get in shape because they're urgency. all urgency ah. yeah and then that's like okay this is where this gets tricky but somebody who's been training consistently goes into pregnancy there, there's a lot of there's a lot of myths around how you totally. need to change you can do damn near everything obviously you're not gonna do exercise where you're Just laying so long on your you belly listen to your body yeah, yeah most everything else you could pretty much follow especially a, a program like anabolic there's not gonna be nothing in there she needs to really change. I had a client that ran a marathon in her seventh month and but she was already an athlete had been yeah. training up to it yeah we didn't overtrain she felt good and she she was able to do it she felt yeah. okay yeah and the the clients I have and including Katrina that have done a really good job of it they all they all seem to have an, an easier pregnancy too. Of course. So that that is going to really benefit yeah, her totally. when it comes to having the baby. Look, if you like Mind Pump, we have a free lose fat guide. It's a free guide you can find at mindpumpfree.com. Costs nothing. You can also find all of us on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump to Stefano, and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam.